Hey guys, welcome back to We Watch the Movie, episode three. Uh. It's Trace, it's Trace. Riders on the storm. Feeling my own balls. Let's go watch some porn, porn. Smoke that chiba. Everybody knows <laughs> that you gotta smoke the chiba and hit the reba. <laughs> we got a fucking awesome show planned for you guys tonight. I got a butter knife and great. some biscuits. Uh, we have a taste test coming up with KFC's donut chicken nasty that's gonna happen. Butter biscuits. Jay's gonna try hipster repellent IPA. That sounds fucking nice. Yeah. Uh, hey, hey, guess what? <laughs> what? Why did the hipster burn his mouth? Why? Because he ate the pizza rolls before they were cool. I'll put the system on trial. Uh-huh. Uh, <laughs> but no, uh, Korjai Taylor is our Patreon sponsor for this week's show. Uh, Korjai! Been with us for a long time, man. We love you. Thank you so much for all your support and friendship. His movie pick of the week that we're going to be reviewing later is The Frighteners. Michael J. Fox. Great fucking movie. A Great fucking movie. of our youth. Sexy woe. Mm. And also, we're going to be reviewing Guns Akimbo, a new oh, release this great week. Movie too. The Invisible Man Woo. is going to happen in your pants. I mean, we may not be able to talk about that one because it's hard to see him, but we will do our best. <laughs> I see what you did there. <laughs> you scallywag. You know what? It's really bad, though, because the plot is very transparent. <laughs> uh, also, we have uh, Nightmare on Elm Street news. Ooh. We've got a bunch of cool shit. It's going to be a fun time. And uh, another bad Halloween mask for you to take a look at. It's going to be Dark Nights. Let's get the sexual. Now, 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 now. As customary, we start with the taste test. Let's listen to the sound test. The heaviest of this bag of greasy f sh Ooh. Hey, do you know what that sounds like? Okay. That sounds like the, uh, the, the load of insulin that we need after this. It's going to be... It's, gonna be it's, called, it's called the diabetes train, Ugh. and we're on top an A-class one ticket. Our new beer of choice this evening will be Fall City Hipster Repellent IPA. Look at it. I think it's it just. I think, I think it just be. I think it probably should be called Repellent of Everybody. Six point eight percent alcohol by volume. A little bit less than last week's episode. Ooh. That was a seven point seven. Check out the can. Yep. It's a cool looking can, man. That motherfucker kamikaze himself to death. Some crispies in the. He looks like the guy from House. The movie House. Snowboarding extreme. Oh God. We're gonna do a little bit different here. We're gonna, we're gonna see what. Now I'd rather go out of the can because I don't want to. I, I think it tastes different out of the, out of that. All right. It usually tastes better out of the glass. I don't believe you. You fucking butt crust. What's that? Is that your breath? Oh, I. Well, now you have to. I poured the whole. Can. Well, good for you. I'm sorry. You selfish cock. Well, good for you. you. Selfish cockhole. All right, you go first. No, I'm not gonna Get go first. Film, no, you go All ahead. Right, I'll go first. Look at the. God, it looks like a fucking. It looks like when you wake up and you pee oh, after you drink a lot. Look at the dark yellow. <laughs> you're sick. If you're new to this show, it's a running joke that we have because Jay only drinks Michelob Ultra. That's yeah, all he drinks. It's superior. Again, I don't know how I have to explain it any other way. It's superior light beer. I don't want to come down from the mountaintops. I'm having a great time up here. Why go down and bother with the druthers? The plan, though, is that if we do this every single week, eventually Jay's gonna like other beers. I don't. Believe I you. promise no, it's gonna it's happen right. one day. But wait until you see his reaction. What's gonna happen it's is I'm gonna sound like Gary Busey and like Jake Busey. <laughs> <laughs> One day people are going to be so disappointed though because you're going to be like, it's fine. It's no big deal. No, it'll never happen, dude. My taste buds rebel every time. It's like civil war in my mouth every fucking time. It's an IPA. That's a well, I don't even like the way you reacted to it, so I definitely don't want to do Ooh. it now. It tastes like pee, doesn't it? Urine. Mm -hmm. It tastes like you sucked on a fucking... You're an old cake. No, it tastes like a delicious IPA. You're a fucking liar. It's good. Well, let me go on the other side. <laughs> Dude, it's too much. Like, I gotta... Take it down, big I, man. I can't do it. You can do it. Oh, wait, shit. wait, wait, I got you, I got you. Never say die, I am ego. Never say never, I I think I fucked up the lyrics. Okay. Never say die. Never say die. Except when you're drinking this. Fourth quarter. This is like some shit they would pull Fourth on. Fourth quarter. Like if you asked for like a really superior light beer, if you were on death row and they gave you this shit because I hate you. <laughs> They're like, here, now drink this. <laughs> the mountains come forth from the sky. <laughs> I knew this one would get Lux. <laughs> Lux the car. Lux the car. The Queen Sulacho, white oh, devil. Dude. No, it's causing like, ooh, I, I'm, it literally caused a panic attack for a second. <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna go for You're gonna go for seconds? One more. Oh, fuck, dude, it's so bad. Oh, it's gross because they just watch your beard touch the glass. Yeah, it's okay. You you got turned on by it. Epidit <clears throat> pear. I can't do it. Dude, you just grew a new blood vessel in your fucking head. 
<laughs> it's so bad. Like, dude, it's fucking. Okay, there we go. I had like, like I had like a vomit burp. <laughs> Hips are repellent. Yeah. Oh, which side did you touch? I don't care. Fucking. No. Oh. Re re it's repelling your wallet. <laughs> don't ever go and buy that shot. We can talk on the back of the truck. Talk on the All right. So it's only gonna get worse. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Oh. We need these fucking tater tots. No, throw them away. Here it is. Jake and Drager, make her look again. Just when I thought you couldn't get any fatter. Dude, we you go and do a thing like this <laughs> and totally redeem yourself. You're an American, KFC. <laughs> we went to uh, Louisville and I saw Colonel Sanders' grave. Oh. We drove around this fucking crazy he ate that and he had an IPA. And found it finally. It was weird. All right. Oh. Ah, uh, dude, I, no, I'm not. No. I thought the IPA. I would drink oh, fucking. Uh, that is so gross, dude. Oh, me, oh, my, oh, chicken taco. What this is, is it, it's, it's, that's called loneliness in a box. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's, that's literally, that's literally somebody by themselves drinking that shitty IPA having this by themselves in front of their TV. This is what Nicolas Cage would have eaten in leaving Las Vegas when he was trying to kill himself. Yeah. I'm like a prickly pear. <laughs> I'm a prickly pear. It's two glazed donuts. KFC decided to make fucking donuts and put a piece of fried chicken in betwixt, oh, man. In betwixt it. Uh, should I cut it in half or? I'm like, not, well, we're not gonna fucking like Lady in the Tramp that bitch. <laughs> Here, take it. Go ahead, reach out. It's scratch and sniff. Smell the diabetes oh in your nose. God, smell, man. smell it. Novolin. In your future. That's it. That's it. Novolin. The donut already looks like it looks like one of those two-day-old Walmart donuts. Hey guys, say it with me. Traceba insulin pin needles. We oh. will need that. I think we need an EpiPen after we have any of it's that. It's a soft one. It's a soft donut, though. That's what she said. I expect it to be firm. Mm, that's what he said. Gotta get in them giblets. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's how you cut it. You cut it like Nick Nolte in uh, in Warriors. Like, the got that shit! It's the shit with shit! Damn ye! Lord of that shit, my ear! Oh, God. That fucking IPA <laughs> really fucked my stomach. Oh, you think that fucked your stuff? Well, dude, I mean, I don't even, like, dude, I'm saying, like, why would we do the beer test and then do this, like, right after? It makes zero sense, so. We're trying to make a man out of your butthole. It ain't gonna happen. My, my butthole's not been a man <sighs> ever. Oh, dude. Oh, gross, yeah, dude. Yeah, I just saw, oh, like, the slimy yeah. fucking oh, cum come from your fingers. God, it really it does look like. It's cum, dude. God. Oh. It's so warm and soft and gooey. Oh, God damn, Here's dude. I don't, I do not want that. Center. Center, and then you gotta check out the other side though. Oh, God. oh. damn, dude. <laughs> Look at this, dude! It's a it's a fucking guy on his first night at prom night with a girl. <laughs> look like those. Look what oh, look like it's not done. My God, you want me to stab this into my heart? Are you fucking serious? Oh, oh dude. Yeah, we're gonna have to wash our hands after this. There's no doubt. Oh, it's dripping. Oh god, it's oh god, dude, look. Oh, oh fuck. Oh, <laughs> some more. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> I know it was. Ready? Uh, yeah. Smell it first. We gotta do the smell test. It actually smells wonderful. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It smells wonderful. It's uh, again depression and uh it smells like chicken and waffles. Yeah, and like anxiety. Dins. Okay, here we go. <laughs> It's so fucking good. fucking good. <laughs> I want to eat the whole fucking thing. <laughs> that shit is fucking awesome. It's fucking delicious. Magic! That's better shit. Dude, that's fucking good. I take about everything I said about the Colonel. I want to invite him to Christmas. Damn, dude. It's fucking good. I never in a million years thought that would work. Holy shit. That cum is just right. <laughs> toasted oh. jelly warmness. Dude, yes. I'm gonna, you're go, not, I'm gonna go in for a second. If bye. you're not afraid of death, take it, Sheriff. Oh my fucking It's fuck. fucking good, dude. That's so fucking good, man. Dude. Bring it fast. I don't even want to touch this anymore because it's just death in a box. But that is fucking amazing. It's like the complimentary, like the salt and like, you know, the chicken taste yeah. with the, the, the sweetness. 
Yeah. It's perfect. It's a perfect combo. It's, it's like so soft. Skittles. It's like Skittles. I, dude, I never expected the donuts. And this is like 30 minutes old. Not Skittles. Yeah, and he warmed it up for a minute in the, in the microwave. No, I didn't even warm it up. I just put it in the microwave. Oh, I bet you did. To keep it. It's really good, though. That's really good. That's a fucking... Dude, that's, that's, a, a, that's a 10, man. That, <laughs> that might be a yeah. fucking 10. Dude. No. Shocker. You shocked the world. Oh, man. It gave me a boner for a minute. <laughs> it was so good. You want to lick that? No, no, you lick it. You're good at that. <laughs> <laughs> you clean up your own mess. And now we finish. Mm -hmm. God, dude, I'm sorry if you guys saw that. Like, I see, it's like a little fucking like like dirty ass like cum drip thing coming out of my mouth. I was like, ooh, ooh I'm sorry about that. Oh but, God, you know, it's really good. How did you guys get demonetized? Well, we said cum twelve times. It's in okay. Video. Cum quats. <laughs> That's a vegetable or a fruit. No, I'm full. I had a salad earlier. I'm sorry. Uh, you know. Uh, Honestly, what if do they? I wonder, do they offer that for breakfast? Uh, I don't know, because that's like that's like a breakfast treat. I don't think KFC even has breakfast, so I don't think I don't think you do they not. I don't know. That KFC. should be a breakfast treat. That should be their first breakfast treat. Man, on your way to work, and you're like, you know what? I don't give a shit about my job, my life. My girl sucks ass, and I don't care. Like I'm just gonna eat this and then have a fucking Red Bull. Or like, it's, it's, it'd be a great cheat meal. You know, if you actually watch your diet through the week, and then you have that one day. That's a fucking. I don't know. Where you dude. get fucking. But you know, the one by it's so good. But it makes you dizzy because of all the sugar rushing yeah. to your fucking head. Like, I could honestly, I could barely even taste the chicken because the donuts are so powerful yeah. in my mouth. Mm -hmm. Dude, that's delicious. I can't believe it was so soft. Kate, when Katie picked this up on our way home uh, for us to do, and she said that the the lady at the drive-thru gave her the most fucking judgmental look ever. So she like held her gaze for a moment, and was just like, "You fat fuck." <laughs> I'm like You're three. I'm compared. sorry. Did I say one? I meant three. <laughs> That was good though. That was really, really God, good. I almost hate to throw it. It's so fucking tasty. Yeah, it was awesome. How much was it? It's like six bucks, I think. Well then, you better enjoy every fucking bite of it. <laughs> <laughs> you, better, you better put some water on that shit. <laughs> <laughs> this represents the last of the patty cat. Slow down. Chew your food. Man. It was good, man. Yeah. So yeah, uh, big thumbs up on that bitch. Oh. Nice. Now, speaking of bitches. <laughs> I don't even know where you're going. A Nightmare on Elm Street is back in the fucking news. It is. Robert England has said some things, and we're going to review some things that he said with those things. He wants to do a Nightmare on Elm Street prequel, where they're talking about the trial of Freddy Krueger. Yeah. The arrest, what he did, and then the eventual release, and then therefore go into the Nightmare on Elm Street Part 1. He said that there's probably enough material there that could probably run 90 minutes. i got to agree with him. Now, he doesn't want to be in the movie. No. He just thinks they should do a prequel for Freddy. I, 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 I can agree. I can say, yeah, it would work. Because he's like, you can also explore the, the lawyers, like the scumbag lawyers that represented Freddy Krueger and how he got off on that <clears> technicality <throat> and all this other stuff. And then he got let out of the street. And then, you know, the parents became vigilantes at the end, burned his ass up in, in his oven, and, you know, lo and behold, dream demons. Yeah. But the thing is, while it would be good for a 90-minute running movie, like, I mean, I don't know if I really want to see a prequel. Prequel. You know, I, all I want to see is fucking Freddy Krueger slice up some boobies in a fucking dream. Like, uh, I, why can't I just have that? I'm actually hardcore against it. And there's more to what he said, but talking about that, I'm actually really hardcore against doing a prequel. because, And I know people have been clamoring this, for this for a while because there was even fan films. Uh, I think, the, if I remember correctly, the script that John Saxon wrote. Mm. Uh, remember we did yeah, the script? Yeah, yeah. I, I'm pretty sure that John Saxon's script w was based on that idea. And he, plus, he had saxophones playing he's, through it. He's it's a ridiculous. beautiful man. He's amazing. The chest hair galore. But... Dude, I, I don't like it. I would not want it. I know a lot of people do, but hear me out. Even, even the most hardcore Fred fans, uh, Freddy Krueger fans, it's hard to get psyched. Like I know it'd be it'd be exciting to go see a Freddy movie of any kind at this point. Yeah. But when you go to the theater, you can't tell me you're not going to walk out of that theater feeling empty when you didn't get very many scenes at all of Freddy full on Freddy. Yeah. Like you go to see a Nightmare on Elm Street film, you want to see Freddy fucking Krueger in his fullest form. Now I'm down for a half and half. If you want to, if, if they had to remake the film and they want to do half of it as a prequel and tell them more and the second half was full on Freddy, yeah. that I'm down for. But a full on 90 minute prequel that was all about like, you know, the exorcism of Emily Rose, like court case type shit. I get the idea and I get why it would be a good movie. But if that's the first thing you're going to come out of the gate with after we haven't had a movie since 2010 and it was that awful remake and you're not actually going to have Freddy Krueger in the movie, no matter how good the movie is, it's going to feel disappointing. Well, yeah, well, the half and half. Listen to you sweet and low, bitch. <laughs> you can't, I mean, the half and half would work except the fact that there's no way. I, the, the, the entire article was him talking about 90 minutes of right. this. And I will say, 
I did enjoy The Exorcism of Emily Rose. I thought it was a good movie. I did too. Like, it was actually an underrated film. You didn't expect that. Yeah, and, and it's based on a true story. I could see how they could they could weave and make a pretty cool thriller case, uh, thriller like court drama kind of movie with um, like a Dahmer kind of thing, or, yeah. or, or the one that they just came out with about Ted Bundy. Yeah. Make it kind of like that, I guess, and make it more hard-edged. And I guess his idea is like to do a prequel would be able to explore more fully how disgusting of an animal that Freddy Krueger was before he even became a dream demon, and therefore set up uh, movies afterwards where it really embodied the idea that he's not a good guy, he's not a pop culture like hero or anti-hero that you can root for, even though people still will. I just I, I don't like. Even if they did something like where they were showing the prequels and they would be flashes like fucking exorcist stuff in his face, would, oh, like you know, out, out of the dark and stuff, he'd be like a full Fred, yeah. or maybe he'd have dreams and it would be like a dream demon or something like, so I promise you a future, and then, you know, <laughs> <laughs> listen to my who, it'd be like, fucking, like, I don't know, like, it'd be like, evil, it'd be like evil Jafar from Return of the Land, uh, but no, yeah, I all this can be yours, yeah, uh, look at my nipples, uh, I, even though, like, it, I just. I would I would imagine that it's better that, like the way they told it in uh, Freddy's Nightmares, you know it was a, it was a, like a 20, 20 minute thing, mm -hmm. and that was like that encapsulated enough for me to know that he was a shitty person and that like he was a disgusting person. And then even when they did it a little bit, they kind of did it. They touched on it in um, was it Nightmare Six? I think it was five. When they talked about his mom getting raped by the thousand. No, no, no. Yeah. I'm talking about with the court. Oh, I don't remember. There was another. I, maybe I'm thinking of something else, but I don't really. I I don't know, man. Like, and I, I I'm, I'm like that. Robert England's like, you know, he's a big a vocal proponent still for Nightmare on Elm Street. And he's trying to get it up and running, and he's saying like, hey, there's ideas out there if they want to explore them. I just don't. Again, I, I think that the prequel idea would work only in the sense that you could like maybe not half and half, maybe 20 minutes. Maybe, yeah. maybe give it a good solid good maybe 20 minutes of acting. And, and maybe even have Robert England come back as a lawyer. Oh, oh let me put it that Yeah, that would be a good idea. Yeah. And, or the judge, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> let me put it this way. Um, if you actually... if Okay, if they're going to remake Freddy, if they have to start with the remake of Freddy, I think the number one cool thing they could do to like differentiate that from the, the other remake that we had yeah. and to get away from... like, Because if you, if you just remake A Nightmare on Elm Street again... I don't think it's going to be scary or can be because everyone's just going to be waiting for those exact same classic kills. Yeah. You know, the blood in the bedroom, like all the kills we know. When you're just, it's like when a trailer gives away too much. When you're watching a movie and you're just watching for certain trailer beats, it's hard to get lost and involved in that. And if you're not lost and involved in a horror movie, it's going to be hard for you to be scared. But I think the number one thing they could do if they had to go back and do a remake again would be to take the first 20 minutes or something and do this prequel in that little bit of the movie and then move on into the remake. And, and like you can have everything happen kind of super fast, kind of throw the fucking kitchen sink at people and fuck them up. Yeah. Uh, but one of the other things that he said was uh, he said he would love to – and we it's crazy, dude, because when we were talking about this news story last week, we mentioned this. We, we were like – he's – Okay, he's going to be too old to carry the torch of Freddy for too long. He doesn't even. He says he doesn't even want to do one more movie as Freddy. But to have him voice an animated Freddy Krueger, yeah. you could do anything with that. And we actually said that like last week or two weeks ago or whatever it was. And that's basically what he came out and said. Was he said, uh, I would love if, if the money was right. Like, if, not for him, but if, if they had a lot of production value and it was a really well Show done Show me that thing. bread, bitch. Yeah. Uh, and I get what he's saying because like, he's like, not if some dude throws together a shitty cartoon and it's going to air on the fucking like, late night Hallmark channel. Not Hallmark, but whatever. Whatever. You'll but kill people. He's like, if there's You'll a kill people in nursing homes. A lot of money. That would actually be fucking. What they kill people in nursing <laughs> homes? It's like Bubba Hotep beats Freddy Krueger. Mm. But if they actually did an animated series, what he said was he would love to voice Freddy Krueger in an animated series if the money was right, if they had enough production value there. And I totally agree with that. Do I think that that should be what they should do in lieu of a movie? Fuck no. But an animated Freddy Krueger series, dude, you imagine how, what they could do with the kills when you don't have to worry about budget and effects and all that? Well, in an animated world, he could get nasty. I, I do like where he said, uh, he was talking about, uh, like, uh, he really liked the movie Inception and what they did with the dream world. And he's like, and you know, now that the technology have mo has moved light years ahead of what they did with Inception, he really thought that they could use something like that to make the dream world really fucked up and weird and scary and out, like, of the ordinary kind of... Uh, of a landscape that Freddy Krueger would live in and therefore bring in the audience and doing it in an animated style first off it'd be cheaper like I would assume uh, yeah I mean you still I mean, I'm sure there's a, a, a giant budget but not like as big of a, a you know a budget for like a Hollywood movie but and, and if they did a graphic uh, novel or, or, or like a or a graphic novel 
animated series like Spawn back in the day, HBO. That's what I thought too. Yeah, I would be like, that's fucking it, like I think that Freddy Krueger lends itself that the franchise would lend itself to an animated series more so than I think, and because he even said like in the article that he thinks the other franchises could benefit from it as well, like Halloween or Freddy, or I mean Friday the Thirteenth. I don't know if those ones would necessarily work that well. Freddy Krueger is like the the idea of this series of Nightmare on Elm Street would definitely lend itself to an animated series or, or you know, a, like a scary graphic retelling of it animated. So, yeah, I mean, I, I would be okay with it. I mean, I, like I said, like, I'm in agreement. In lieu of an actual movie, no, that's fucking stupid. You go fly your kite off a, off a cliff. I want to see a movie. Yeah. I want to see an actual movie. And then if we had an animated series to, like, be a companion with it, that would be cool, too. Like, I even imagine them doing something like having, like, um, they could do an animated, if they started the animated series with Robert England voicing Freddy or something, doing uh, a, the prequel story that he was talking about animated. Mm -hmm. And then having it, uh, you know, coming out right before the actual movie came yeah. out. And I, I don't even think you need to time in together, I, but I do think that you should do both simultaneously because I'm with you, dude. I do not just want an anime. As badass as it could be, it could be the coolest thing ever. I don't want just an animated series. And I think a lot of fans feel that way. Like, the franchise is too big to do that. Yeah. And no matter how big you do an animated film, it's still going to be animated. It's not going to have... It's too much cock to take down at once. Oh, you can't take it all down at once. But what they could do, and what the, the West Craven estate would be really smart to do, is to say, let's do both. They don't have to tie in. They could be completely separate universes, and then the best part of all this is that we don't have to. Robert England doesn't have to sit in a makeup chair for three hours. He doesn't do have to do the stunts or, or any of that stuff. He could literally play Freddy Krueger for fucking years. And that's to what come. he said he would do. He'd be willing to do that. Yeah, and that's a beautiful idea as long as you also do film. The, the problem is now. I just thought of it. Not, and actually, and it kind of goes. It, it defeats the purpose of what he was talking about because he said, um, and I remember this uh, where he was talking about the remake failing and you know they asked him i don't know if it was a, a somebody on youtube interviewing him or if it was a magazine or what you can find it on youtube the interview but they were asking him about why he thought the, the nightmare on street remake failed in 2010 and he said you know jackie earl haley is a great actor which he is he's a fucking awesome actor i don't think he got the shot that he deserved i mean he could have been a great freddy but they he looked like a burnt fucking wiener sphincter <laughs> like the way his whole cg shit looked it was yeah. awful but he was like it was because the timing was wrong and why that is, is because they had released the DVDs of uh, of Robert England's Nightmare on Elm Street right before they released the Nightmare on Elm Street yeah. remake. So he was like, the people that had never heard of Freddy Krueger grew up, now they, they watched it and they, they were like, I, Robert England's Freddy Krueger. So he was like, while well, the story, he liked the story. He's like, I think that they had a good you know idea of a movie. The problem with the timing is they came out right before they released the, the Blu-ray edition or whatever of the Nightmare on Elm Street. What I'm saying is, my point, coming all the way back around the NASCAR track, is that that might be an issue if they released an animated series with Robert England voicing Freddy Krueger. Right. And if it was badass and it was amazing and it was yeah. as well and uh, received and beloved as the Spawn series was, and then they were trying to uh, remake the Nightmare on Elm Street. True. People yeah. were like, well, no, that's fucking, that's Freddy Krueger. So just release the movies first. But then again, I would also, I'm, all, I'm, I'm literally arguing with myself. I could also argue that Mark Hamill's Joker is fucking Joker. Like, that's yeah. an amazing Joker. Now, a lot of people consider him the best Joker, but it didn't really stop, you know, uh, Heath Ledger from having a great run as Joker or Joaquin Phoenix. But to be fair, we've already had several Jokers. So sorry, there's been a handful of Jokers. Yeah, there's I, literally only been... Two. So yeah, you know, but I'm I mean, talking about like, but, but Mark Hamill did such a phenomenal job yeah. with the Joker. Yeah. Like people, a lot of people just like they associate mm. Joker's voice, or if they think of Joker, like with Mark Hamill's voice. Mm. But either way, I like the it's problem. An easy fix though, just put the film out yeah. and then put out. Well, the also, I would also say that the, the 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 thing is is that in this particular instance, where the difference is, is that uh, Robert England actually did play Freddy Krueger, and he did a phenomenal job, and he did a masterful job of, of portraying this asshole character, which we all love. But uh, he did a great job, and then if you have him doing an animated slot, doing the voice for Freddy Krueger, he just he's continuing his legacy. But does that really stop somebody else from taking up the mantle and being able to take and move on with it? Because it's like, well, if we're promoting this, then I mean, are we like, what's the issue? Like, you know what I mean? Not if you release the movies first. But then, and so that goes back. It kind of defeats the purpose. I just thought it'd be cool, like I don't know, like to have the and like the the prequel stuff in the in the cartoon, and then. Boom, boom, uh, flashbang in your, in your anus yeah. and go to, the, to the, the movie. I just hate the idea of TV shows connecting with movies. Like the whole Marvel Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. You must they, hate CW, they, you that, racist fuck. Yeah, the <laughs> same thing as CW. I hate the idea of shows tying into movies. To me, that adds to the over-fucking-indulgence that we have with some Marvel stuff where it's like, no, you got to watch this series before you can watch the movie and this are all these like connections Why and all this shit. Like, keep it simple. I mean, just like keeping it... Like, 
just companion like uh, episodes or something. It doesn't mean that like what happens in the movie is going to reflect in the animated series. Right. But it would cool. It'd be cool if they timed it. Maybe if I'm what I'm saying. Maybe if they timed it correctly, where mm -hmm. they show the prequel. The, the, the cartoon and then the movie comes out like six months later. Well look, I think we both feel like the best case scenario, what we would do with it, the smartest thing to do with it was to, would be to not remake it at all and like literally just pick up with a new Freddy Krueger and he's terrorizing some kids, right? Like, don't go back and try to remake the first movie. Don't try to tie it into this and that and all this stuff. Just bring out a new set of kids, and everyone knows who Freddy Krueger is. You can do what they did in the 2009 Jason reboot, where you just had those little side shots of him and his mom. They kind of recreated the first film in about a five-minute flashback sequence to just yeah. let all the new people know what was going on and where we were. Do something like that, and just do a sequel, man. Let's just get let's let's skip over the fucking like Force Awakens shit, where we got to reset everything. It's Freddy Krueger. Not JJ. He, your fucking dreams. Well, it's simple. Just go with the new sequel. And if they did that, then they could also do the animated series, do the prequel. And we already know what Freddy Krueger is. We're good to go. I'd also say, um, which is, I mean, I don't know. Like, okay, so do you remember like what they what they've done in Candyman? We just watched that trailer, and it's an actual smart idea. Like Candyman's been gone for a long time, right? Like people forgot about him. He was a myth. People just kind of moved on with it. But they these kids heard about it through the grapevine for some reason, and. Uh, they, they started bringing him back. People started noticing him again. He started getting power, and by getting power, he's able to enter into our world again. I think they started touching on that in Nightmare on Elm Street 6, because he's like, every town has an Elm Street, yeah. and, and he's like, if they forget about me, uh, he's in it Friday, uh, uh, Freddy versus Jason, he's like, he goes, if they stop believing me, I'm gone, I can't be gone. So I think you could, you could play into that angle a little bit too, where how do you bring him back? He's now he's no more than a old wives tale like a myth. It's been years since Freddy Krueger was last ever heard of, and so having a, like well maybe there's a book or, or a yearbook, a true crime like, series, like a yearbook or something that a kid discovers like hidden away behind a well, locker. Why not even do that? Because everyone knows about the events. What if they did it? What if Netflix or something like that did a, a big true crime series and you bring in these these people that are reporting on it into the town and the whole town like it could start to get talked I think about. I, and, and you know what I would even do like is I'd even bring in more social media. I bring in uh, YouTubers. Yeah, like YouTubers finding Freddy out about. Krueger's trending. Yeah, and then fucking PewDiePie would be like, Papa Tee Poo, you're from the Dude, you could even crack jokes out. I'd be like, yeah. I mean, it's like, I never knew I could have this much power with the fucking end, with the like the trending shit yeah. and the viral shit. He could, he could, he could. And then, he, and then you know, and then you could do the PewDiePie. It's like, fist it, bro. <laughs> or whatever he does. <laughs> oh, dude, like. could you imagine the fourth wall jokes that Freddy could do? I know. With that and, and again, I mean, it really goes back to what kind of Freddy Krueger do you want? Do you want that kind of popping the joke every five seconds like they've yeah. had, or did you want him to be more serious? Definitely more shattered? serious. So, I mean, if, if that was he, the, the fourth wall thing would be out, even though that would be. Fun. Some ideas for later sequels. Yeah, though. it would be. But having him come back around uh, and being reintroduced into the world after some stupid fuck, maybe a YouTuber <laughs> or YouTubers or or a Facebook uh, media group or something, got a hold of or CNN. I mean, you could you could throw in anything, and then they bring it up, and then that name starts getting out. People are like, what the fuck is that? And then they start like you know un unveiling the old crimes, and then Freddy gets power, yeah. and maybe his old brittle bones get a little yeah. stiffy, and maybe. he comes out and a dog pees on him. I don't know. I love the true crime angle because everybody's in their true crime and I know that ties a little bit too much into Halloween with the investigative journalists but you know diplomatic it, immunity <laughs> <laughs> but you're black uh, but where they where they did that with Halloween but yeah man if you if, if a big true crime special comes out about people who said that they saw a monster figure in their sleep yeah. and they called it Freddy Krueger and, and you know they do that then you got a sequel all the other lore can, can still exist in its own fashion and you can just go with a pure on sequel man I think that's the fucking I, I think yeah and again that's that's exactly how I think that you get him back into the uh, into the world, as far as like the horror community is concerned, and as and making a solid ass movie without discrediting all the other movies. Yeah. Is that that everything happened? Like all that shit happened, even the shitty ones. <laughs> but he's been dormant for a long fucking time, and they're through stupid shit people like just digging their dirty ass fingernails into the dirt and pulling up earthworms and graboids and wieners they find freddy krueger's name and by getting freddy krueger's name if you get the name you get the power if you get the power you get the girl you get the girl you get the money you get the fucking goddamn cinema blockbuster why is there a wiener in my dirt because you were digging in hugh hefter's yard i can't believe it that's his old that was his attached <laughs> wiener <laughs> hello Welcome back to episode three of this building. I guess the flea market is doing well. Michael Myers, dressed like Bitch Myers from Sun 41. Everybody say hello. Good God, Michael. 
You make people wish they had coronavirus. Get off. So listen to this, you piece of shit. Robin England's back in the news. Once again, that little maggot can't keep his face out of it. Like a fly, smelling poop. No, I'm not smelling your asshole. You do that on your own. Looking like a burnt hot pocket. I hate it. I don't have anything to say about it. I don't care. Okay? So don't get scared. The camera angle's about to change. We're about to trailer reactions. If you're gonna spew, spew into this. <laughs> right, let's watch Antlers, the new trailer. This has been out for forever and people keep saying, you gotta watch the Antlers trailer. I'm like, we fucking missed it. The Where's only the time, van? The only time I see Antlers is in my rear view when I fucking kill them <laughs> with my car. <laughs> Population like, control. They kill right. my car. <laughs> but the, they had a new one come out, so it's not, we're not too late to join this one. So, Antlers. Let's see, make sure you got the, I don't know if the sound. You got to skip ad. I'm using a Mac and I don't know how to use Mac. Sucking, fucking, and touching. Okay. Can anyone give me an example of a myth? Zeus. Or a story? The clitoris. Baby. I'm afraid of. Baby. I was ready for it, it didn't matter. Lucas. Oh, I know her. Tell me your story. It's found the heart of a man in the woods today. The other half was found in the mine. What the fuck was that thing? This has got to be an animal. Wow. No animal I've ever seen. Something is going yeah, on. Yeah, seeing weird shit. These drawings belong to a student of mine. This is what was in the mine. It's a diabolical spirit. This is a myth you're talking about. For you, yeah, but a cautionary tale to the people who believe in it. Ooh. He'll come for me. He needs me. What the fuck is he doing? Dude, that looks pretty intense. Stay out of the shed! I ain't gonna kid. I ain't gonna kid. Yeah, dude, I didn't know what to expect, but antlers, like, this should be the, the commercial for eat more chicken. <laughs> <laughs> that, 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 the, the sound effects, the music is like what makes it creepy as fuck. Oh, yeah, like those things. Well, those things <laughs> look like uh, the descent things. Yeah, dude, that, that looks good. Now I get why people are so hyped about that movie. That looks cool. Like, so I think that's Diane Keaton. Yeah. That's who it was, I uh, think. That looks so cool, I won't even go see it. <laughs> I respect women so much, I completely stay away from them. Yes, thank you. Whoever bought this toy for Michael Aichi with a passion that can only be matched with the passion of the Christ. Playing with the goddamn camera. Okay, so don't get scared. The camera angle's about to change. We're about to do two trailer reactions. If you're gonna spew, spew into this. <laughs> uh, but uh, we're, we're gonna do Candyman trailer reaction, and then we're gonna do an Antlers trailer reaction. Yeah. Here we go. Okay. What about that? All right, so more movie news coming at your buttholes. Oh God, I can't take it anymore. It's like being in prison for the first time, Naughty Nate. <laughs> <laughs> Nate dog. Nasty uh, jungle of love. <laughs> um, all these bitches and all these hoes, somebody gonna heal, gonna fuck. I'll never listen to that song. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but Todd McFarlane and Spawn. It's a long road. It's a long dark road. I thought, I thought you were gonna go with the. Uh, it's a long road when you're on your own. Rambo. Yeah. <laughs> like, like I always picture Tom McFarlane because in '94, the Swan movie that came out, and then, like he wearing like a Vietnam jacket, just walking down streets, and everybody rejecting him. It's like you know that movie sucked, right? I enjoyed it. Good clown, not like. <laughs> but the thing is, uh, yeah. Well, uh, really quick, uh, kind of um, to preface it. 
I remember Spawn. I, I love Spawn. The comic book was amazing. I remember when it came out in 92. Yeah. I got the first issue. I got the first comic book. I, I collected them all the way up to like three or four, and then I kind of, you know, lost interest, and then I went back and bought a bunch of them. The animated series is what set that shit on fucking fire, dude. That shit was amazing. Like, that was gold. And then, the, then I think it was 94, 95. I could be wrong. The problem with that is what happened is that when, when Spawn was going to be made into a feature-length film, Todd McFarlane ran into a... a like a ton of roadblocks, more roadblocks than Sammy Sosa on his way to break the home run record. But he got steroids. But what happened is, <laughs> kissed you mama. Uh, but the thing is, what happened is that he was like, well, when I went in to pitch the idea for Spawn, he was like, you know, how studio executives are, they're already pretty much against you when they when they find out what your your premise is. It's a comic book movie, one, right? He's like, fuck that. And it was in the early 90s. Then, yeah. yeah, it was in the early 90s. Um, but he's like, all right, so they were like, okay, so he's from Hill, uh, strike one. Uh, he's uh, he's a, a military soldier, and he's, you know, betrayed his government, and he's strike two. Uh, and then there was something else that he was like, but they give you these three strikes, and it was like, they were like, well, it's going to be an R-rating film, or it's going to be an NC movie or something. Like, they were really against the idea of it ever, ever making it, so he had to cut a shit ton out to, for it to go to the theater. And that was the PG-13 film. That one sucked real big buttholes, like fucking syphilis butthole. But <clears throat> then I remember being in the video store later on after the movie came out. Um, I didn't get a chance to go see it in the theater, but I remember seeing it. <clears throat> the Spawn cover was different. It was when he was standing there. He looked fucking awesome. That was the rated R. That was the uncut version on VHS, and I bought that. It wasn't like that much better, but they at least got to add some certain things into it. And dude, honestly, they had a great cast yeah. back in the day because they had Michael Jai White as as uh, Spawn. They had fucking John Leguizamo as Clown, who Underrated was fucking actor. great. Dude. Yeah. yeah. By the way, I'm gonna quick rewind that in 1997 is what I'm in. The thing about that movie was I, it was extremely underrated as far as like what the character was and how well of a movie that could have been. Like that could have been a fucking huge blockbuster in 1997. But again, will not diminish the fact that it was a comic book movie. A lot of people weren't willing to take the chance on it. They were like, no, I don't think so. Uh, we might have a success with Blade, but the Spawn thing, I don't know. And uh, dude, it was actually, it would have been groundbreaking, right? Because what you have is that you have Blade, which is the first black superhero. People fucking forget about that shit as far as in the movies. Yeah. Blade and Spawn. Like, they both were black guys and they had, like, they were the big starring roles, but people say it was like, Black Panther. It's like, it wasn't Black Panther, fuckers. But either way, it had some groundbreaking elements in it as well. And, and of course, it didn't matter if they were black or white or Mexican or whatever color they were. It was just a really good idea and a good story, and he got fucked because of the studio execs at the time. Now, moving forward into the future, here we are now, back to the future, 1.21 gigawatts. The, the uh, news article that came out is that uh, the Spawn uh, creator, Todd McFarlane, has went on to say that they are going to make the movie. Like, it's gonna happen this year. Yeah. And he is crediting that uh, possibility, or that, that reality, to Joker doing so well yeah. in cinema. The only thing I don't like about it, man, is that Todd McFarlane basically won't shut up. He keeps coming out, this article, in some form or variation of another, has come out every couple months or even every few weeks. It's always Todd McFarlane just with another thing. Either he's ranting and he's pissed. He's like, "Well, I want to do it, but Blumhouse won't give me enough. This person won't give me enough money. Uh, people are fighting me on it." He's like, uh, and he, he put in the stipulation that he has to direct it. A guy that that's not yeah. directed much or, or anything. I'm not I don't sure, agree with that. but he's he, he's new to directing for the most part, at the very least. And he his stipulation is that he's going to write and direct it and he's fighting hard for his vision in the movie, and he keeps complaining and saying he's running into roadblocks. And the next thing you know, I mean, Blumhouse is on board to do the movie, and they do their shit cheap. They can do it for a budget to where we can make your R-rated movie, and you can be, and that's what Blumhouse does great. Yeah. They say, you can make the version of the movie you want to make, and we'll let you make your movie, but it's gotta come in at this budget. Mm. And I don't think he could get enough money for it, or whatever the problem was, he's always complaining about investors, about this, about that. Every few weeks he has something else to say. Today, he comes out and he says, Oh, by the way, it's going to happen, and it's going to happen this year, because as you said, he's like, because of the success of Joker, he was like, before, I was begging people to make this movie. He's like, now my phone won't stop ringing, people are begging me to make this movie, yeah. and, and he's like, oh, my phone won't stop ringing, Academy Award winners, all this stuff like that, and he almost... He almost just kind of sounds at this point like a guy who's who's trying to like sell you bitcoins. You well, know? it kind of sounds like the guy that got an internship at Apple and he wants everybody to know about it. He's like, <laughs> look, I'll be working with Steve Jobs as like son. Yeah, just the way he, the way if you read the article, and I'll put the, the or, cups the cups. I'll put the the, the uh, quotes up here. Just the way he says it is almost. I don't know. It's kind of like I don't know, man. I don't know. Like, like you've been saying this for a long I, time, I, and I, now you're starting to get like it's, crazy. It's, it's coming off as a little cocky. A little bit arrogant in in the way that he's talking, but I can got I can kind of get 
and, and appreciate his frustration that he's probably had to face over the years with this with, with this amazing franchise that could do so well in in the theater as a dark horror supernatural yeah. thriller movie. Uh, that he just couldn't get it off the ground because people were afraid to take chances until Joker broke the billion dollar fucking mark. Joaquin Phoenix sailed through the sky. I mean, Logan did it before that. But Logan did, but, but Joker really took a dark, dark edge to it. Days of Future Past. It did, but no, but Logan and, uh, but yeah, but when you, uh, Logan is fucking beast. But Logan, the movie Logan, while it's great and it's good and it's amazing in its own way, Joker really took a stab at the idea of having a mentally depraved person and going down that dark, dark tunnel hole and not coming out until a fucking enema. I think but, that it's the most recent one. Like well, maybe, and it, and it made and a billion, made and it made a billion dollars. Yeah, and it's and it's made a ton of awards. But I think that he's just a little frustrated, so he's he's really happy now. Him directing it, I'm not I'm not on the side of that. Uh, I just I don't because what he's basically saying in the article is that he's going to surround himself with people that are going to make him look good. Like he's he's working with a great production team. He's working with the guy that did the effects for uh, The Walking Dead, so he has real confidence in that. He had cast Jamie Foxx as uh, Spawn as. Uh, Al Simmons, which is fucking amazing, he cast, and he he cast a uh, uh, fucking Jeremy Renner. Renner as Twitch, which is an, another great choice. Yeah. Uh, by the way, it really sucked because he has dude back in the day in '97. He also it was fucking Martin Sheen, dude, as the main bad guy in yeah. the movie. That was great. Yeah. But anyway, it's great. Captain Crunch, uh, Frosted Flakes. But um, yeah, nonetheless, so he he's basically relying on the efforts and abilities of the people that are around him to make him look really phenomenal, and the, that's great, and that's all wonderful and stuff, but I can't play the fucking guitar for shit, but I was like, I got a great band. And I feel like uh, they'll make me look good and sound good. I don't care if I can strum a few fucking things and they'll get... That's like, uh, yes, Ted, but I do not believe that we will get Eddie Van Halen until we learn how to play our guitars. <laughs> like, it's not... It's the it's thing... Is, it, and I'm not saying that he couldn't do it. Like, I'm totally yeah. not. Like, I liked Hellraiser. Hellraiser's creepy and weird and fucking out there. And that was directed by Clyde Barker, who had never directed a movie. So it's definitely possible to do something like that and be really good at it. True. But the thing is, this is a... It's this, a great point, by the way. This, well, this is a great, this is a big, giant comic book movie. I mean, I can imagine, I don't know how big of a movie. I, I don't know if they're going to go for a $150 million, million budget. dollars or something, I think, probably. Well, I would say, I would say they would at least go with 50 I don't know. Well, because Deadpool went $50 million. Yeah. And I mean, Blumhouse, I'm taking a chance, because it would be Blumhouse's first uh, foot out into the superhero genre, because they, they would be producing a superhero film yeah. with Blumhouse. They might take the chance to be like, all right, well, we're going to give you $50 million and and let's really make something wonderful here. The problem is, I don't know if they'll do it with Todd McFarlane helming it. And again, I like Todd McFarlane. He's a really cool guy, and, and I know he's been out there like, you know, he's kind of, he reminds me a lot of Ryan Reynolds and Tim Miller when they were trying to get Ted Deadpool made. That's like, true. they would go to everybody and suck their dick just to get that movie on screen. And they did it sometimes three times. They didn't care about gonorrhea. They just did it. Yeah, and she's, uh, her biological clock was ticking. You gotta get it when it's ready. You gotta get it in. It doesn't matter if she looks like Agatha Harkness. But, uh, <laughs> that's uh, the mother from, uh, anyway, that's from Marvel comic books. But either way, it doesn't matter. They, they, they were out there, they were, they were preaching the good word, and they got it made eventually, and it, and it, was, it was a great success. So I appreciate that. I respect that. Yeah. The thing is, at some point, you got to realize like you got to need to take a step back, maybe, and let somebody that's more experienced come in. And you can stay on as a consultant and somebody that can write and help work with the script. Maybe, but at the same time, I, and, and I agree with you completely with what you're saying. I think everybody, like all the investors and everything, are probably thinking the exact same thing. Uh, but you bring up a great point about Clive Barker and, and about every guy who had to do it for the first time. Yeah. The thing is, is that you know I don't, I don't know, man. Like. It maybe I think the best thing to do would be a co-director. Like you still have control of everything, but get somebody in there that's seasoned that can help you, you know, do the whole thing. I'm looking at you like this because it's like he goes, "I'm gonna do all the cool shit," but you could say that you were on it too. <laughs> the Toby Hooper, I, Steven I, Spielberg. I, thing. I'll keep it at my house, but you can come but over. No, and I mean, visit. like, look, I mean, look at the uh, the the Cohen brothers, uh, the, the guys that did Avengers, the Wachowski sisters, the Wachowski sisters. <laughs> like, uh, you know, uh, but in, especially in horror these days, there's a lot of uh, of co-directors. There's a lot of two directors, John Wick, those movies. That's a big thing. So. I think I think the best thing would but be, but they are like, experienced directors. You can be the director, and you can have fifty-one percent of the power. All right, you can have fifty-one yeah. percent of the power as director, and then we bring another guy who's seasoned and knows what's going on, and let him do it. That could be the smart thing. I, I I'm not trying to shit on Todd McFarlane here. At the same time, I he bought a ball from Mark McGuire for God's sake. I understand where he's coming from because this is his baby, this is his project, and he got fucked once before, yeah, he and he wants to make sure it's done right this time. When if the movie comes out and it fucking blows minds, uh, I've never heard a girl blow ass before. But oh, it, it's bad. If it, let's play battle shit. Oh God. But if it blows minds we're all going to be eating our words saying we should have listened to this guy all along and i love stories like that 
But at the same time, it's like Rocky in cinema. It, that, it's either going to happen that way, or the whole thing's going to blow up, and you're going to see Todd McFarlane out here talking to news outlets, shitting on Blum, shitting on everybody, and just burning bridges left and right. And it's going to be Scott Stapp all over again. And I went in there to my sister, and I said, "I'm not going to jail for you or anybody." I, I got the Megadeth thing. I get what you, I get yeah. what you're saying, but yeah, yeah, I agree. Uh, and, and and again, uh, I, I understand completely uh, Todd McFarlane like wanting to take the helm of, of this project and be like, I want to make sure it's done correctly and I want to make sure it's done right because I have this vision. And, and they and they did say in the article, well, I guess he, he addressed that issue about him being a first-time director. He was like, I've directed this movie in my head thousands of times because he's been working towards wanting to get this movie made for years. Yeah. So he's directed different. But, I was like, but it's different when you're imagining something in your head until it, how it actually works. Yeah. And if you're not really experienced with how the movie set's going to go and like how to move, you know, I'm not Everyone saying has the plan until they get punched in the face. Yes, yeah, my Tython. <laughs> but it's not like he can't do it. I'm just saying I don't know if he's the best choice for it. Yeah. I, and I, again, I, I like I get it too. He doesn't want he doesn't he doesn't want someone taking it away from him and and just taking complete creative control and be like yeah. fuck you, bitch, Stanley Kubrick, your dick. Well, but I. I Get a director that he could work with and then have him as a consultant, not even a co-director, because the reason why the co-director thing wouldn't work is because he is not experienced at all. You know, the, the directors that are like co-directors, they all have done movies. But maybe you do it that way and then he directs the sequel by himself. I mean, I don't know. That's like giving him a fucking paper badge. Like, you're a part of the sheriff's department. <laughs> What's it like to wear that badge? Why? Like, honestly. <laughs> but my hypocrisy knows no bounds. But at the same time, I, the, the thing that makes me skept skeptical is Blumhouse is known for letting people do their projects. Mm -hmm. they're, they're known for letting people do it their way. And then they, they give them a certain amount of money for whatever the risk uh, warrants. And the fact that he's working with Blumhouse, and you know how well they work with directors who have their own IPs, uh, and, and producers who have their own IPs, yeah. and he's still coming out over the past few months saying, oh, nobody wants to give us money, nobody wants to do this and that. It makes me kind of go, okay, if you have this, you have the same problem over and over again, and the one equalizer is that it's always you. you you're always in the, fighting with people, and you're always the one guy who's always the person fighting with people, and that makes me wonder how hardcore he's being about this, and how difficult he's being, and kind of delusional he could possibly be being behind closed doors, but who knows. What he's saying is that it's going to come out, and they're going to start making it this year, and people are knocking down his door. It's like, but it almost, it just sounds like that kid in high school was like, yeah, I got a girlfriend, check her out, and it's like this beautiful, like, tin. And the Where'd kid, she live? Yeah. Yeah, and like, oh, Ontario. She, she's in Fiji on a photo shoot oh, right shit. now. You know, like, I, I don't know. Tell her to Skype you. <laughs> she can't because there's no service there, bitch. <laughs> she's it's, a war, it's a war torn country. <laughs> Where? <laughs> Ontario? <laughs> but yeah, that's the spawn news. Hopefully he's right. And I, you know what? And with all, this, all the shade that it seems like we're throwing, I'm not. I think not we, at all. Like, I love spawn, dude. I love Todd McFarlane. Yes. Like, he's fucking the man, dude. I think we both agree the best outcome in my hopeful scenario is that. That he gets to direct the movie and the movie comes out and it blows people the fuck away and it becomes an amazing be franchise. Huge for him too. Yeah, it'd be awesome and I'd be happy for him. But I'm just you, you got you can't help but start to read the tea leaves a little bit with all the shit that's been going on with this I franchise. I don't drink tea. <laughs> the shit that he's been saying. But okay. yeah, well, and one more thing, I, you say that well, Blumhouse lets everybody do their own project and they they base the money giving based on that. Yeah. Well, they're not going to give that much money. And then I think this movie, to be successful, to make a really solid, hardcore entry into the superhero realm, making the dark, supernatural thriller that he has in mind, it's going to require like 50 to $60 million to really put it into its space. And they're not going to give that much money. Now, Blumhouse knows that they, because again, it's such an opportunity for them, that they can put their foot into this dark realm territory and have a superhero movie out that would be theirs, you know? They're not going to do it with Todd McFarlane helming it. They're just not. Like, I know they're not going to be like, look, dude, you've never, look, listen, you've never fucked a girl. I'm not going to bet you. Like, I can't. It's like, dude, if you had never boxed in your life and you're like, I'm going to fight fucking, uh, even if you say you were going to fight, um, like, a uh, goddamn, what's his name? Um, Sugar Ray Mal Leonard. No, Malinaji. <laughs> fucking, uh, like, half your weight. Yeah. I'd be like, fuck you. I'm not putting any money. I'm not putting 50 bucks on you. Yeah. You're going to get your ass kicked. Imagine this, though. The, imagine this, though. Uh, yeah. Imagine this. What about Lee Winnell? Who? Lee Winnell, the guy that just directed Invisible Man. I thought you were talking about Perp Plus. No. <laughs> he directed Invisible Man. He directed Upgrade. He's been, he's an upcoming. I would be okay with he that. Worked, Blumhouse loves him. I think that he could be a I, great I would be. Director. I would be fine with him. And, um... Honestly, dude, you know who I think that I would really go with? Like, because I haven't, I haven't heard much of him in a while. I, I would say I'd give it to him. Um, Lights out. Pony Smasher. 
Because it's going for the supernatural sure. thriller where you don't see Spawn. I'd be pumped about that, yeah. yeah, and yeah you know yeah. what I mean? And it's kind of yeah. like the... Yeah, I, I'd be into I, Either way, but the thing is, I would like to have an established director. And just, you know, and they don't have to have mega hits under their belt. No, I'll be honest with you, man. I'd actually... I'm more interested in seeing Todd McFarlane. I don't want him to. I don't. But I don't want. I don't, I don't want him to derail it. It would be interesting to see, though. Like no, when I, you go in and watch it, I think that would add some. For me, that would add some excitement. Like oh, oh, it's his first time yeah, out. Let's see what he does. You know what? I'm, I'm. Fuck it. We'll give him the benefit of the doubt. Go do your thing, McFarlane. Let's see how far you can run yeah. this track. But just don't let your personality getting get in the way or That's your pride get in the way of the movie getting made. Yeah. If people. Are, people seem yeah. like they're trying to help you make this movie, man. Let the movie get made. Don't get too fucking crazy. Don't come in there like Harrison Ford be like, I want my character to die in the first movie. <laughs> I hate fucking, I hate Han Solo. <laughs> but yeah, as long as he doesn't let that happen and he lets people help him, which I think in the article he was expressing the fact that he has some great people around him that yeah, would was. be able to make him shine. So, uh, you know, and in a way, I kind of respect that too because he's like, look, I want to take a chance. I really want to direct. I think I can do a, a great job at directing and I have a great team around me. It's like being a basketball player, like coming from college and being on an NBA team and you know you're surrounded by some of the best players ever and you're like, I'm not going to be the number one star but these guys are going to help me get better at my yeah. game so I, I you know if that's the case then definitely and but the, you're not going to get the 50 million i, I just but I, I want this movie to have a real good shot at success and it's really the nice prime time to do it and if you fuck this up man if this is a fuck up movie because of the direction's awful and, and it's like it doesn't make any sense because you you thought you were directing an animated series rather than an actual cinematic movie that makes sense for everybody then I, Spawn might be derailed forever. Like people, like, I'm not yeah. touching that. That's a fucking curse property. I, I feel like Todd McFarlane. It's a curse turd. In this situation, <laughs> Todd McFarlane's Brad Pitt in Seven when he's riding in the car with Morgan Freeman on the on their first day, and he's like, "Look, man, just don't jerk me off. That's all I ask. Just don't jerk me off." I feel like I feel like what he is is he's basically like Michael J. Fox in The Frighteners, which we're actually getting ready to, to review tonight. Uh, he's Michael J. Fox when the one guy when the detective's like, "You just don't." get it do you <laughs> like that's like the studios telling me it's like you just don't get it do you we can't give you a big budget because you never directed a shit thing in your life <laughs> like, it's like oh okay but anyway uh, that's the news we we went on longer than i thought we would on that but there was a lot of things to talk about yeah that was a big old package done for yeah in your face. so yeah so like like you're mr perfect <laughs> <laughs> wait michael i mean i mean honestly like right now i feel like you're like our city or hall coming back you're trying to no, you don't do that. We're not buddy cop movie from 1986. All right. Also, Jurassic Park Dominion. The goddamn dinosaurs are taking over the world and Chris Pratt can only be the one to save us because he's Stylo. Who gives a fuck? Nuke him. Idiots. Other news, quick hitters will go through really quick. Yeah. Um, stuff that's going on in the horror universe that sounds fun right now. Jurassic World's title is going to be Jurassic World Dominion. 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 Prequel to the Exodus. That sounds like a universal <laughs> ride that's doomed to fail. No, honestly, dude. It looks cool, though. That I know. is a fucking great dude, game. They're bringing everybody back. They yeah. got everybody in this bitch. They got yeah. Jeff Goldblum. They got Chris Pratt. They got uh, fucking uh, uh, Sam Neill. They do move in herds. I heard. Sam Neill, yeah, Sam Neill's in it. They got everybody. I think that yeah. Chris Pratt actually described it as the uh, Avengers Endgame for Jurassic Park. Like, yeah, everybody's in this band. And I honestly, I actually don't give a shit about that. I just, I don't like. I want to see the me. Yeah, that's cool or whatever, but I don't really care that Let's much. Go faster. What I'm excited about is the fact that they named it Dominion based on where Fallen World ended off, where they let all these all these dinosaurs loose. I thought the end of that movie was the best part of that entire movie because you see like baseball parks, and, like these baseball like, stuff, baseball stuff. Uh, uh, Jose Canseco. Uh, <laughs> But you see the dinosaurs like moving into like there's like baseball games going on. You see like a brontosaurus running across. You see fucking T Rexes moving out into the world. I would want to live in the neighborhood with the brontosaurus because they only eat leaves. And they're gonna take over the fucking uh, like America, like the, the the world. They're gonna take shit over like dinosaurs in present modern day. Yeah. Not like that stupid shit they did in Jurassic World two. They're like, oh my god, a T Rex in the city. But <laughs> you got them everywhere doing everything and actually taking over. Man, that could be the coolest fucking Jurassic Park movie of all time. Shy of surprise, it might be a great movie, and I'm okay. With that, and you know what? Yeah. I actually think it's gonna be uh, like I like those post-apocalyptic movies. I've, I've always loved that kind of shit. And dinosaurs ruling the earth, and like having us being surviving, like you know, just trying to survive and move around. But I want to see it happen. I want to see the two. That's why I think, I think that's what they're yeah. saying. I think that it, it showcases like maybe it showcases like the first 35 minutes of the movie of them actually doing that, and then the rest of it's kind of us just, like surviving. Like what yeah. the fuck are we gonna do? We gotta get them back in the mosquito somehow, <laughs> or you know, at the very beginning. Anyway. Cool. I like yeah, it. Dominion. I'm into that. Dominion. Uh, another small piece of obvious fucking news. Saw is going to be rated R mm, for torture, okay. porn, violence. It be. I mean, yeah, if it wasn't, if it wasn't, thank God Blumhouse isn't directing it, right? Ah, ah, ah.
Uh, Jason Blum actually came out about the Black Christmas thing. Well, you're definitely said. not getting invited to Jason Blum's Christmas party. <laughs> I'm glad I'm still okay with you, well, Jason they, They've Blum. just been really hardcore like on the PG-13 horror lately, and I don't understand. Is that brood I smell? Uh, but he actually <laughs> said, oh, they asked him about Black Christmas, by the way. Jason Blum was like, yeah, I think I ruined Christmas horror films for at least like five years with that one. Good. And he was like, I'm proud of it creatively, but it was a failure financially. And it's like, well, yeah. Cause he could have just been like, I just ruined films for the next like two months. <laughs> yeah, he said, not only are we not going to make a Christmas horror film for the next five years, he's like, but I think we ruined it for everybody. I think you did. Yeah, I don't think you um, should ever touch that, that again. That movie was fucking awful. Really bad. Uh, but uh, other stuff, HS. Season 10 of HS, I gotta say, man, like, I was, after the past couple seasons of them not being able to hold on to a good story. Hmm, I'm still kind of done on I, it. I was kind of like, I don't even know if I want to watch this I, I season. Don't, I don't, dude, I've been so burned. Yeah, I, I've got, kind of been burned out on what HS has been doing lately, but they cast, they're, they're bringing back Sarah Paulson, they're bringing back Evan Peters, great. and now they announced that they're bringing Macaulay Culkin into the fold. Ah! <laughs> yeah, yeah his thing. I, I don't. I, but I mean, I feel like I feel like American Horror Story is becoming Michael Jackson. They're just inviting me over to Neverland Ranch, like my, Macaulay Culkin. Be like, don't be ignorant, blanket. Come and sleep in the bed, blanket. You're ignorant. You're ignorant, blanket. Don't be ignorant. <laughs> ignorant. No, I, look, I, like American Horror Story is one of those weird, like love hate relationship shows. Yeah. I, I love it sometimes, and I fucking despise it. And it always sets itself up to be amazing, and then it always lets me down, just like my own sex life in the bed with my girlfriend. Yeah. But it doesn't matter. I thought you'd go there with that. It does. I have to do it all the I time. Because I understand too. But either way, Calgon. But no. Uh, <laughs> but the thing, like, it seems cool. Macaulay Culkin is actually weird enough and strange enough and kind of out there and a cool dude that's really comfortable where he's at in his life that he'd probably be a great fit and I think he might be pretty awesome. I it. think I'm going to have to tune in to see it. I think I might watch the first episode just to see where he's at and what's yeah. going, how they use him but it depends because dude, I, I'm not getting my hopes up at all for American Horror Story anymore and if you guys are like I, we know that there's a massive community out there of American Horror Story nutsos that love the, the, love the entire series they love all that shit that's great but dude to me honestly it's just one of those like shows that started off really super fucking amazing strong i got the steroid ultimate power of ultimate warrior season one and then it just slowly has declined over time where they're more focused on building up a really early uh repertoire with the audience and then just kind of be like well we don't know what to do yeah. let's rush this shit out but i it's macaulay culkin dude and he's yeah. done some cool shit so i think that that's and i would like to see evan peters him and sarah paulson like uh, bouncing off each other and yeah. kathy bates i think is coming is she coming back yeah I, yeah and so the, the little teaser he showed it was like just the ocean and like it was this creepy ocean feel i like that i don't know whether they're going to do anything with that or not but I, that's what i'm saying like, man if they just do like <laughs> get away from all the previous seasons stop trying to tie shit together it's not the fucking marvel universe i get that they're going to bring back covenant shit here and there or whatever but if they just do a streamlined story and they try to actually be scary like like, let's not try to, like, let's get away from just trying to shock people with, yeah. like, crazy shit, and, like, let's try to make a scary show. Um, that I'd be fucking down for, like, uh, that, that show that started on sci-fi that, oh, fuck, I can't remember the name of it. You guys don't know what I'm talking about. The one that's on Shutter now, it started on sci-fi, uh, Nick DaCosta show. Oh. But, yeah, just, like, um, Channel 24 or some shit. I don't know why I'm fucking blanking. God, fucking it's not working. It's, it's all that diabetes going through her head from the chicken sandwich. It's fucking broke. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I don't know. Like, I'm definitely going to watch the first episode. I'll have, have one scene where Macaulay Culkin turns around in the shower and he looks at the outside the curtain. He's like, get out of here, you nosy little pervert. I'm going to slap you silly. <laughs> no. Anyway, so the next little... Last piece of news. I'm excited for this. I think it's cool. And I my think pantaloons. It's, it's gonna. Yeah, I'm already wet. Doctor Crazy. Damn, Jake. Pants. I didn't know you like to get wet. <laughs> I like to get wet. See, <laughs> you ever have your shit pushed in, Jake? Uh, Day of the Dead. Uh, definitely. Definitely my favorite George Romero movie of all time. I love Night of the Living Dead, the original. Dawn of the Dead is amazing as well. Classic. Day of the Dead, to me, is the best of all. It's such a great fucking story. It's an amazing telling. And it's like, it's got great cast. It's got amazing chemistry and atmosphere in it. They're going to make a TV show based on it, based on the first 24 hours of a zombie invasion that leads up to what's going on in the Day of the Dead, which is pretty much at the latter end of uh, the military installation where the zombies are pretty much taking over everything and there's only pockets of survivors now. I think it's fucking cool, man, and I really hope they get back to the basics of the Romero-styled kind of movie telling because Day of the Dead was such, like, to me, it's underrated. Like, I, I think when it came out, I'm not 100% sure, but I think when it came out, <clears throat> uh, Siskel or Ebert, or one of the two, fucking downgraded it. They fucking thought it sucked Well, they asshole. hated horror anyway. Well, I know, but they, they really fucking went after this, uh, and they put it right, they put anal beads in it, and then they made it sing. 
Uh, and, and you know, they locked it in its basement. But Someone I, shit on the coats! They, I hope it wasn't my coats. They shit on everybody's coats. But I think he came out later on. And it could have been this one or Dawn of the Dead, but I know it was one of the two of, of, of Romero's movies, but I think it was Day of the Dead. And then, but he came out later on, and he was like, you know, he was so wrong about the movie. Like, he misunderstood it completely. When it came out in 1985, he didn't get it. Like, he didn't understand what they were going for. But then he understood. Like, he understood the subtleties of what Romero was doing. The, the TV show... I think the idea of having it lead, you know, lead up to where we were at the very beginning of the Day of the Dead movie would be fucking awesome. Now, I know that people will say, well, we already have The Walking Dead, so isn't that kind of a rip? No, The Walking Dead, and I love the show, and the guy that created it was awesome, but everything spawns pretty much from what Romero did. Like, that, Romero is the granddaddy of them all, and he started Day of the Dead with the military kind of being a force, and like, it already had taken over the world, and you know, they were pocket survivors. And <clears throat> Walking Dead didn't originate that. This is like, this is like granddaddy shit. Like, let's go and see what granddaddy has to smoke in his pipe. And this is one of those few cases where I'll actually say, if you're gonna go back and you're gonna do a Romero thing, I think it needs to be political. I think it has something, it has to say something well, about were. the political climate. Yeah, it's gotta, and that's what was great about those zombie films, right? Like, they, they all had something, and it, but it was natural, it was organic. It wasn't like we're trying to sell tickets. They weren't they were pushing it down your fucking throat like yeah, a cock that they, you don't want. If they do it smartly and don't force it in your fucking face, like you said, like a cock that you a don't cum want. A uh, cum drizzle. Oh, stop. I've still Golden got, I got Clay's donut on my finger from that fucking KFC. You have sandwich. to ask for the you golden shower. You're gonna come to me right now. You're gonna come to me right now. Jizz. Oh. Is that, is that, is that, is that, is that your face oh. when you spit it out? Like, oh, I can't do that. <laughs> Too much, Stephen. Uh, but yeah, no, I, I agree, man. And a bunch of people are shitting on this because it's gonna be on the Sci-Fi Channel. Uh, but the show I was mentioning earlier, Channel Zero, I think is the. I, I don't know why I can't fucking grasp it. It's a good show. Uh, that show originated on Sci-Fi too. And that was a really good, well-done show. And I get that Sci-Fi will do some like lackluster shit from time to time, but it seems like they're trying to turn their content wheels. Uh, they're doing the Child's Play series. Didn't they do Sharknado? Yeah, seventeen of them. I like uh, the first one. And they're pieces of fucking garbage shit. Like the first one was great because it was fun. It was an idea. Yeah. And after that, I was like, let's beat this fucking horse to death. <laughs> Uh, it's caught in the bar to kill old Sally. Yeah, everybody was like, it was it was cute because it was weird, but now it's like you're. Fucking, yeah, yeah. It's, it's sad and desperate, but uh, really desperate. But you like know, they are doing. Tinder. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's my Tinder profile. Like, I don't know. Sad I'm as desperate as Sharknado Four. It's like, uh, hey, well, describe yourself. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, as, as long as they put the effort into it, man, I, I'm not it's like, uh, who's to say sci-fi can't do good series? Like, they're getting ready to do Child's Play. Now they got this. They're getting some big titles. Maybe they're actually going to put a little bit more effort into stuff going yeah. forward so you got to give it a chance could it be total ass yes the miss tv series everybody was pumped about that oh, yeah, and they, that ended up that like had a, a great fucking hot cake in the sun a great premise I don't know what uh, that just, they draw a hot cake it melts hot cake in the sun would melt it melts and then if there was wind then it would flounder but if you're really starving and hungry you'd still put your face in that puddle everything's wet and but, down where it's better under the sea <laughs> Uh, yes, absolutely. Uh, uh, he's throwing coming. Clam chowder! Is that what you would do to Ariel? <laughs> you get back to your father! Ariel's hot as fuck. You know who else, who else is mad hot? We can't say that. Why? Ariel's 16. Well, she didn't tell me that. Well, dog, you need, <laughs> dog, you need to check her fucking records next time. Ask for a birth certificate. He's like Brad Pitt in Once Upon a Top in Hollywood. He's like, hey, prison's trying to get me for years. No offense. But when they finally do, it ain't going to be good hey, for you. Hey, how does a mermaid wash her fin? With Finlandia? With Tide. Anyway. I hate you 8% more than I did. I feel like 12% stronger. <laughs> but no, I, I, like, here's the thing. When we were talking about the political, like, the, the subtleties that George Romero was able to, to weave into his stories with Night of the Living Dead, Dawn of the Dead, and Day of the Dead, it really is a master art. Because if you look at Night of the Living Dead, it was about racism. It, it was clearly about racism, and it did a great job without forcing it down your throat and making you feel like you're in school and being educated. You better go watch it, because if you don't, you're fucking racist. Dawn of the Dead is about consumerism, about how we're all just obsessed with buying things and consume and consume and consume that fucking dick and toaster. That's all you want to do, and so zombies just go to the mall. Day of the Dead... I always felt like Day of the Dead to me was more about, uh, well, I know Land of the Dead was about corporate control and corporations taking control and everything like that, but <laughs> she stole my cat. Everybody <laughs> knows her name was Linda and she is a hoe. Uh, but uh, no, uh, but Day of the Dead was about um, military, the militarization of, of uh, people uh, where our freedoms are taken away and pretty much we're controlled and this is the way the world, it's very black and white 
kind of environment. It's very uh, sterilized and things go for you know the way they go because it has to because the the industrial complex pretty much controls everything. A lot like the Planet of the Apes movies. Did yeah, I think that the industrial complex controls it, and that's that's where I think that they're going to go with this movie where uh, people if they're going to go, I like it's really because unfortunately Ramiro was gone, so he can't be you know executive producer on this. I, I don't trust a lot of these woke fuckers that would get control of this movie to make it political. You know what I mean? That's what I'm scared yeah, of. Yeah, y'all don't have any yeah. any sense of subtlety. Th there's none. Whatsoever. Like they're like, fucking, you take it, suck it. But like that's what they do. They they like immediately put a finger in your face. Yeah, it's like and I, while I'm doing this, I'm yeah. fingering your girlfriend. Like you're like, oh, okay. Well, I didn't know that yeah, was it's happening. Like, it's like your boss watching you do data entry. Like yeah. he's just standing over your shoulder, like, I, you're not gonna punctuate they. Uh, you're, you're not gonna punctuate its with the with the dash there on the top of it. Like they're like like you better fucking like this because if you don't, you hate women. I was taking my time, but no. I'm watching you watch this. And if you're not smiling during that joke I tried to make about the Me Too movement, then you're a piece of shit. And I'm gonna tell Twitter and all my fucking yeah, blue check mark friends. I, I can fucking see a blue check. Boy. Yeah, you just Go. feel like you like fuck. you sit down and watch a movie and you just feel like you're being judged. Like, am I reacting right? And I, like, I don't want to watch a movie like I'm in a fucking dude, job interview. I'll tell you what, I've I've literally like I, I've I've seen movie, like I've been looking around before and like I've seen like shows or whatever where it's like you if they make they make you feel compulsory to go yes she's had it hard oh wow and you're like no, yeah. I don't fucking do that and if you don't then people are like <laughs> they look at you like this like you ass yeah. you're like no! Or let me just roll out this flaming turd of a movie, but say that it's about the empowerment of women and then if you don't like it then I can just say you're a piece of shit. How about this? Instead of being an asshole and making people fucking suck a cock of nobody cares political bullshit, you make a subtle movie if you want to tell a message, and you create a great storyline, but underneath yeah. the surface, you have a great idea. Jay, I got a big and idea the, in my head. It's a fart. It's coming. What? Listen. It's not a fart, If dude. you want to change people's minds, then get everyone in the theater and change their fucking mind. Rather than saying before they go to the theater, you better go watch this movie so you can learn your fucking lesson while they go watch their movie and they get their entertainment, teach them the lesson while they're sitting there. Make them go, you know what, I never looked at that angle. You're right, maybe I've been a racist piece of shit. Maybe I've been a misogynist asshole. I never saw it from the woman's point of view that way. But if you're screaming at people before they even have a chance to buy the fucking movie ticket, then you're shitting on your own cause. How about, how about this? How about a great idea? I dropped a bologna sandwich. It was awful. That's why I dropped it, Jay. I know. Thank you. Pick it back up and eat it. Eat your mess. I'm not touching it. I feel like a little worm on a big fucking hook. Our children are the future. <laughs> I'm cleaning out my closet. Uh, all I'm saying is like, these woke fucks that get a hold of it, I, if, you know, you don't know. Like, they, all, they ruin the fuck out of any possibility of a good show that has a great message that can reach people and do it, and, and do it in an entertaining way that's not shoving it down your mouth and you, you can actually absorb it. You're like, I get it. And, and George Romero was so good at doing that and you get his, like his property and you're gonna do this. My favorite movie of George Romero, Day of the Dead, one of my favorite movies actually, and, and you and you go up and, and you're gonna have a prequel to it, you know, and it's gonna lead up to that, you know, the the actual Day of the Dead movie. There's so many ways it could go wrong. I have faith that they're gonna actually hire writers that are wor not worried about fucking, you know, let's have diversity and let's have this and that and let's and not worried about the actual subject, like the actual things that matter. Because the thing, I, and I, I watched this one great thing. Uh, it was like uh, the, some people were just more worried about diversity rather than intellectual diversity. They would rather have like people of different, you know, all the different colors yeah. and stuff represented rather than people of like he represents that. That represents this, that, and then have intellectual diversity. While I completely agree with what you're saying, yeah. and it's a very smart thought, please stop. You're making my dick feel like it's one of the aliens in Toy Story, and like, the claw's coming to get it, because you keep doing that over top of my I dick. I think that you're just getting horny, and I understand. Well, I understand. What to on camera? This, this is a great idea. This, this gets you horny. This is a great piece of news. The claw's coming to select me. I won't touch it, okay? It's like the claw from the, the, the goddamn the vending machine thing. It's not really, it's like doing this. It's like, oh. Yeah, you're with little you aliens, and like, the claw. <laughs> Anyway, so that was that piece of news. The last piece of news that we would like to talk about I'm and gay. share with you. We're so gay together, mm -hmm. not with one another, but separately. We go to mm -hmm. Grinder and we fuck the shit out of men. Um, <clears throat> you do it like that. That's yeah. what I meant to do. Yeah, so you're a bottom girl. Love the cock. <laughs> you're a bottom girl, are you? Uh, what was the last one? There was another. I think that was it. No, there was another news story. Was there? No, I got it. So Here the last go. piece of news, yeah, again, gay in for the cock. Uh, <laughs> Trick or Treat Studios is releasing oh, yeah. a Michael Myers 
themed toy line. It's crazy, right? Yeah. Strange, weird, huh? Who ate chocolate? I didn't, but that's what's happening, dude. <laughs> Trick or Treat Studios, who's no more for costumes and masks and things, are releasing uh, uh, like a toy line. Uh, they've got the Michael Myers is coming out. They've got Halloween. They've got Halloween four, that's five. It looks some sexual. Dude, they, I don't really know how I feel about. I think it's Halloween one. He looks like a fuck boy, dude. He looks like cause it's, <laughs> he's too handsome. Yeah, it's too like good looking. <laughs> like it's not. It's not like fat William Shatner that that's forgetting his lines. I don't know where I'm at. Like, Damn it, I'm a doctor, not a pool man. Now, now Halloween, the, the Halloween five mask and the Halloween four mask looks dead on. That looks. I, I actually like the original one a lot. It just it just doesn't feel like. I know he's thing. handsome though. Like he looks he's just good. too good looking. He looks like a Tom Brokaw motherfucker. Yeah. It's like you know, Tom Cruise was wearing a mask that got morphed into his face. But at the same time, the only thing I don't like about it is their clothes. Like, I think I actually think the toys look amazing. Like, in all seriousness, like yeah, their they, mask, they, they there's an Art the Clown one coming out too that looks That's good. That's a good one, yeah. But their mask and shit, the way that they're articulated, looks really, really good. I love it. The only thing I don't like that is the clothes because they have Barbie clothes on. So, do you get undressed with makeup? I don't know. Everything else. me everywhere. <laughs> Michael Myers. He'll stab titties. Doesn't matter. Haddonfield. You. Oh, no. I don't know, I would, now I'm gonna have that suck in my head all fucking day. Oh. But, life in plastic, Michael it's Myers fantastic. <laughs> um, but, uh, Come on, Michael, let's get Thorzy. <laughs> life in Smith's Grove, I don't wanna know. But, um, where are you going with that mask? Michael, Michelle? you a hoe! <laughs> <laughs> um, God damn it. The clothes. The clothes. They I don't like the clothes. They're too Barbie-fied. Like, you have that, that solid-looking mask, that sheen, that manly fucking, like, um, baby teeth. Yeah. And then you got the, <laughs> you got, like, these, like, Velcro G.I. Joe clothes. It just he said like, Davy Jones. I'm going to take it to Davy Jones. I thought you said, I was like, I'm taking it to Davy Jones. I'm taking it to Davy Jones. I'm taking it to Davy Jones. Can you, can you remove the clothes? <laughs> <laughs> it's like a Necronomicon. Oh, just got, uh, it's like a Necronomicon just got opened to the book. You're like, <laughs> uh, no. Uh, what, can you remove the clothes? <laughs> probably. No, yeah, I mean, but will he be anatomically correct? I'd probably not. Do you imagine? Yeah, you Michael doesn't Michael pee Peter. or poop, so he probably doesn't even have a butthole yeah. anymore. No, dude, I wonder if the clothes come off. Like they you look, say, they you look, say Barbie dolls, so I wonder if they like come they look off. Loose. Yeah, they look like you could. Take well, them off. that's actually that's not like necessarily Barbie doll. That's like the old GI Joe, like old school twelve inch. Yeah, that's that's what. That's kind of, all right. That's all right. Yeah, I it's not know. that bad. I don't no, know. I mean, check your fucking privilege, fool. It's ten years from now, <laughs> ten years from now, you'll find him at a flea market wearing no clothes, and you're just like, oh, it's Michael Myers, and the mask will come. Off. They're like my daughter got rid of this. <laughs> uh, no, uh, they look cool, and, and then yeah. uh, they also said that they came out with busts. Bust it. Do -do. Uh. <laughs> this is a jam for all the fellas trying to do anyway. But the busts, they came out. I think they've got a, a Halloween bust, and they've got a couple of the other busts that they're coming out with. Uh, like that's cool. I, I'm glad that Trick or Treat Studios is getting into the the, uh, the action figure business, a collectible action figures, dick. But they're getting into that. The adult collectors, because you know. You know, like there's like what there's uh, who's the companies? Not Hasbro that fucking do Mattel. No, not for Michael Myers. Todd McFarland. Well, no, that he he has done them before. Mesco. No, Mesco. What the fuck is that? Mesco makes toys. Mesco? Is yeah. it Mesco? I don't know. Uh, Neca. 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 Neca has always done a solid job. Yeah. They've always done a great job, and and I'm glad to see another like contender step into the ring to make some great toys and, and some uh, collectors items because I, I it, like again it looks good. I'm just not sold on the Halloween one, but on four and five they actually you look really unique. Yeah. They actually do look like the figures that I like. Hey man, if you're gonna buy a collection of that'd be cool, man, to, in your room to, like to have like all the Halloweens and. The oh, different yeah. masks, yeah, yeah. You get the burnt marshmallow, or the, you know, and and the fucking smoke damage from uh, Deborah. Put it in my oven. Hmm? They look, they look amazing. I, I want it in my loins. It's gonna be great. Yeah. So there we go. That's the news portion. It's of it. time for movie reviews. Okay, movie reviews coming up. We're gonna have a great time. We're gonna get you associated with some movies that you've barely never heard of before. Probably you have. Who cares? We're gonna have a great time talking about it. And let's take our pants off. Table, table, table. Get Crisco. Oh yeah, and then there's goddamn uh, the Invisible Man came out earlier this day. Thank God! Can somebody please give Michael that juice so he can go forever invisible and stay dead? I hate that movie, and I hate you for liking it. You're visible again, and I hate you just as much. The Invisible Man! It's the universal classic monster, The Invisible Man. Uh, it set up the universal uh, dark cinematic universe that they're still gonna go with. Like the mummy tanked, uh, like hardcore, more than Mike will on a Saturday night going down on a man it tanked. 
but it did anyway. Like, and it sucks, dude, because you know it's unfortunate. Like that was their that, that was their their pioneering kind of film to go out and, and make their own cinematic universe. Either way, this one redeems himself. Uh, it's a good movie. It's a solid movie. It's a great movie. Uh, but is it really the movie that we're all waiting for and we're salivating from and like we just it's like having sex for the first time is it really that much of a good movie it was everything oh well let me put it this way it was everything it was, it was everything I wanted the, the movie to be it was good it just I thought the movie was well done it was fantastic I think what you're getting at is that it's being a little it's just a touch just a touch I feel like it's been being overrated a little it's be, bit yeah it's getting public. beat down like people, people are like oh my god they're yeah. acting like it's the second coming right but uh, forgetting all that because people are overrating it let's put that out there real quick it's a good quick. movie though it is a good movie it's a well done movie and it feels like um, and it's Lee Winnell directing this and he did Upgrade uh, and he wrote Saw and he you can I can feel because he directed Insidious coming in the, 3 too I can feel it <laughs> coming in my but no, I was not going to say Jeffrey. That. I was not. Uh, but no, you can feel actually him coming into uh, like his powers as a director. Mm -hmm. I can't think of a better way to say it. But like, you know, he did Insidious. Th in, I think in coming three. into his own. Yeah, you can feel him starting to get a, his own trademarks or yeah. whatever. Because from the opening of the movie, what I love so much, and this is a non-spoiler review, by the way. We won't spoil anything. But from the opening of the movie... It was, dude. The shots were so beautiful. They were. The cinematography. Really I know good. that's not the director, but the cinematography was great. But the, the framing of the shots was beautiful. The setups, the landscapes, were, was beautiful. Even as the movie goes a little bit along, it gets a little bit predictable because you know the, what the story is going to be from the trailers. Even yeah. like you, you get what the story is going to be, and they, they switch up some things here and there. And there's there's a twist or two in the movie, but there's a there's a point in the move in the middle where it kind of slows down a lot. And it's it's very very predictable. Yeah. It doesn't stay that way, but for like maybe thirty minutes in the middle, that 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 meat portion is a little bit predictable and slow. But he has a way of it's it's so it's like in my Shyamalan films, it's so good to look at, and the camera's work is done so well that you don't even mind it that much, even though you know what's coming. Mm -hmm. And then there's one scene specifically which which we talked about, and I'll just say the knife scene that pops up and happens Dude, that, at one point. That was one of the best. Shocked me right that out was, of my shit. That, that might have been, that probably was the best scene of the film. And they Absolutely. didn't give it away in the trailer, which thank God they didn't. Because I feel like what the trailer did, which the trailers were great and, and, and you know got people hyped up, which is what you're supposed to do with the trailer. But I think it gave away a lot of the film. Like some of the main like scares that happen, some of the more bigger reveals that uh, that go on, the fucking trailer showed him. You're like, oh, well, God damn. Yeah. And I mean, I didn't even jump. And you know I jumped like no matter, if, there's, if it's a fucking car that sounds like from Uncle Buck station wagon, I'll jump five feet if I hear it in the parking lot. But there was there was none of that. Like I was like, oh, okay, well I know it's coming. I, I know that part's coming because I saw it in the trailer. Yep. But that scene specifically with the knife, I didn't see that shit coming Dude, from I, nowhere. I'm I like, yelped. Ooh. Like and this is for a Thursday night show in the crowd. I'm, I'm predicting this is going to do well at the box office because it was one of the busier crowds I've had at a movie for a Thursday night showing mm -hmm. this year, and it's one of the better horror movies that have, that have come out this year for sure. It's high up on the list, but. That, that scene right there, I was sitting by myself in the theater and I actually yelped like when that scene, cause I saw, I was like kind of in a trance, I guess a little bit. And then the, the, the knife thing came up and then the next scene happened. I, I went, Ooh, wait, <laughs> like it wait, scared wait, me. I went, Ooh. you yelped. Yeah. I like, I went, you yelped. Yeah. I was sitting there calm and my feet were up and I went, Ooh. but nobody else in the theater did like normally in those scenes it's hidden because everybody else goes, Ooh. but it got me and no one else. So audibly in the theater, I was like, Ooh. if you, you, you sharted a little bit, it was like when your butthole went, see her missed, <laughs> but yeah. No, yeah, it, were, it was definitely one of those. Like, I think the biggest thing about the movie that I like, I, I love, is that the atmosphere and the music. Like, I think the music oh, and the atmosphere. So I feel like that is what sets it apart uh, from. Not like it's not like okay. I'm not. Let me rephrase it. I'm not saying it sets it apart from a lot of horror movies because a lot of horror movies do rely on sound and atmosphere building to make it or a complete film. It does that, but it ma it makes itself unique in the Universal Studio lineup so far. Like right now, I mean, again, you're only going off the Mummy, like, which is just not even really connected. Yeah, and it's like, I mean, that's like following up on like a, a D average in, in your yeah. junior year of high school and having a straight A student. Come they in. gave up on that version of the of the, uh, of the Monster Universe, and they haven't actually said they're going to continue it. And I think everybody just believes that this is going to be successful, and if it is, then Blum can go to Universal and be like, "Let me do more," and then they'll well, work what it I, out. So, but. Nonetheless, like I take, the, and I don't even think this is a horror movie. Like I was telling Mike when we were doing the uh, the commentary for Harold and Kumar, White Castle, we were doing that, and not. Like, I was saying like I was excited to see this movie, and normally I'm like terrified or petrified to see a, a certain horror. Movie. I don't feel like this is horror. Like I feel like it's a thrill. I don't know what that says about me. It's like the motherfucker stalking and killing his fucking his ex girlfriend that ran away from. It's like fucking get back here, bitch. 
bitch and make me a chicken sandwich. <laughs> but I, I like I, I don't know. It, it didn't feel horror to me. Like it felt more thriller, like a seven kind of movie. Thriller or horror though. I mean, I don't. There's psychological horror. There's really. a, there was enough horror. But there, but there was. But I just I, I felt like it was a mystery that was going to be solved. And, and, and I knew the guy wasn't fucking like a monster. It's not a poltergeist. It's not a herky jerky bitch from the sewer. It's none of that stuff. It's just a guy with a really impressive array of toys, <laughs> and he can fucking turn himself invisible. Now the thing is that's always been like it's like that's a part of the universal lineup of their uh, classic creature monsters right like, if they ever do have a crossover ever like he's just a fucking dude I'm just a dude. Like, there's a wolf man, there's well, a creature from the Black Lagoon, there's, there's, there's a Dracula. There's spoilers to talk about there with how things end. No, 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 I know, I, I get yeah, that, but, but, it, but it's still, he's not supernatural. Like, he's just right. a guy. And, and so, I don't know. But nonetheless, the music, the acting, the atmosphere, it's all well done. Everything about it flows really well. I had a great time watching it. Do I think it's like the most amazing horror film I've ever seen in years? No, absolutely not. I'm just going to go ahead and say that. Like, and, and no offense to anybody that thinks it is, and that's great. I mean, if your dick got hard or your vagina got wet when you were watching it, that's an A plus. But I didn't, I didn't feel that way. Like, I didn't think it was on the level of like timeless classic. I think it's a solid entry into the universal recreation of those classic monsters, and I'm happy as fuck that they made it and they did it a really good way. I think what people are thinking is like, it's so easy to expect an Invisible Man movie in 2020 yeah. to be fuck world, uh, in 2020 to be a shit movie. Yeah. I think automatically no matter who's doing it or where, where it comes from if someone announces, hey we're doing a Universal Monsters classic Invisible Man it sounds cash grab, it sounds like it's going to suck so I yeah. think part of that is just people are surprised but maybe maybe that's it maybe it comes from our lack of surprise because I knew Lee Winnell doing this uh, from the trailers the the way that they were handling that where it's it's her, her crazy boyfriend mm. who you know uh, comes up with I don't I, and she's badass by the way she's, she does a great like, job she does amazing yeah. yeah and she was also in Us uh, but uh, and, and he does a good job in the movie and, and the friend does a good job all the actors actually in the movie and, and more more specifically more importantly the characters are almost all very likable mm -hmm. except for the people who aren't supposed to be the couple people and I don't feel bad. like they were forcing anything on anybody you know what I mean like yes. you know what I mean like because I know some articles came out which I fucking hate like every time a movie gets momentum going some asshole group has to claim credit for it and be like it's this they're saying this politically. They're not. Like, it was a good, solid yeah. movie. Well, and I didn't even they think are, about it. They, that's what's important, though. They are saying that. They are. This movie is about possessive boyfriends or people in general. Well, it possibly, is yeah. about that. And it is about the dangers of that. And it is about how scary it is. But they're doing it without telling you how to feel about it. They're just putting the movie out there. And it's like, yeah, fucking crazy boyfriends can be scary. You know? And, and you don't need someone to make a movement behind that. It's, it's what the movie's about. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, and, and so it's, it's actually a testament to that fact that we were talking about earlier in the episode about the, the Romero thing, the subtleties of, of uh, a political message and not forcing things down people's throats. So I guess in that way they do do a good job of showcasing that without going overboard and having a fucking tasseled titty that's got saying men don't own me going in your face. Like, it's a, it's a hype. I get you. I get you. Yeah. I know where you're coming from. It, I get you. It's a hyped up version. It's a hyped up horror version of a, a, and it doesn't even have to be a guy or woman. It's, it's a hyped whatever. up horror version of a possessive relationship. And that's, that, that's my the point. Fucking I feel like, I feel like the, the victim of the film who ultimately becomes the hero of the film uh, either gender can relate to because we've all had bitches or assholes in our lives whether it be a, a male or a female that have been or, or sometimes controlling of the person and you yeah. have to I've got to break free but uh, we, and, you know and, and so, mentally as well as physically controlling and they do it and they do a great job of showcasing that so yeah uh, Johnny Depp I hope a new movie comes out about him <laughs> like that Amber Heard bitch is fucking crazy and I hope they replace her but anyway uh, Ultimately, I'm going to give the movie a 7.5. I thought the movie was solid. I think a lot of people should go check it out, especially if you like the classic creature feature films of the Universal days. Uh, and they do they do a really good job and like of just bringing that character, which is the Invisible Man, is like, I would say one of the harder ones to bring up into like we were saying the 2020. It's so it's and to so make easy it like, to go off course. Yeah, and to make it where like damn, this is fucking kind of creepy. It's yeah. really hard to do that. They do a great job of doing that. So yeah, at some point, it's solid as fuck. Yeah, I think it was genius to have this to, to, to frame the story the way that Winnell did frame the story. And he was even talking about Dracula the other day, about how he would do Dracula, and his thoughts are fascinating. I hate fascinating. you keep on talking about like you fucking hang out with him at volleyball. <laughs> I was just reading his article. Like, oh yeah, uh, Lee, Lee Winnell. Uh, I was reading his interview. We were at Dunkin' Jet. Donuts. <laughs> we were having a KFC Donuts sandwich. Yeah, we were. 
But no, um, the way that they framed the whole story and the way that they took the Invisible Man and they made it a realistic, like almost Batman Begins type mm -hmm. thing was genius. And I, and I think that the way that they did this movie was fantastic. It was a really good, really tight thriller horror movie. Um, tight. Tight. Uh, I actually give it an 8.0. The Ooh, more and more I think about it, I like wow. it a lot. I don't think it's the second coming of anything. You know, I, I think people... But it's one of those movies, like, people go see it and the audience... Like, as I was walking out and peeing... Um, uh, in the, not not in the bathroom, but on my way down the hallway. Because what I do after a movie, I just pee all over the hallways as I walk out. Yeah, of course you do. But no, I was listening to the audience, and, and it was one of those fun movies because you hear people go, "Oh man, that was fucking fun." So like that was that scared me and shit like that. And it didn't actually scare me. Maybe it's just like if you've seen enough of these movies. Because in the '90s, there were there were a lot more of these horror domestic yeah. thrillers. Like that was something you they're were more used dozen. to. Yeah, they don't come out that much anymore because they're not tied to a previous IP. But this movie just it was a well done movie. I, I liked all the characters I was supposed to like. The only thing I dislike about the movie is the middle portion of the movie where they've got to do this uh, this fucking repetitive thing where you know and you know why they have to do it because it makes sense for the story yeah. but she has to try to make people believe her but the audience already knows what's happening like we already believe her but we have to sit and watch her for 30 minutes try to talk people into believing her crazy story right and i get that that's a hard thing to write because if everybody just believed her then it wouldn't make any sense but there is a dead lag in the middle of the movie that i got pretty bored for about 30 minutes where it's like oh you don't believe me he's right here right now no you're a fucking crazy bitch and you know that whole thing it's kind of like it's kind of like when you uh, meet a girl at the bar and you both are horny for each other but you have to do the uh, obligatory like do you guys want you want to go out to fucking like Olive Garden yeah. and can I get you some in a way, yeah. like, look, I just want to put my penis inside you and I know you want me to because I know you want me to because you told me that in, in a conversation so I'm not like put, it's kind of like that it definitely is like that but I also got to throw a shout out to the special effects here because oh, they, yeah, are they are done nice. are so nice. well there are certain scenes where uh, glitches I'll say happen and that's cool and yeah you like, know what that reminded me of that reminded me of uh, which I thought was so underrated in the Nightmare on Elm Street remake when he was coming in and out of the dream sequence. The micro naps, yeah. That was fucking badass, dude, and that's completely underrated. It was it reminded me of that. For sure. It's creepy as shit. It's fucking cool. There's a particular particular elongated scene not elongated mm -hmm. uh, in the movie though that happens and the special effects. Oh, you talk about me using my hands, fucking Captain fucking Phasma. You're doing this I'm shit. I'm gonna eat me a big sandwich in a wheelbarrow. We gotta control the, On the western end of the plant. And then uh, go to Valvoline. But no, I'm just saying, like, there's a uh, there's a glitch that happens. There's his Achilles heel in yeah. a way that happens. And the way they do it, free, that, that part That's actually cool. scared me. It was cool. When it would show partially and shit, like that actually got me. That's did done you, so good. Did you jump at, in, in, like in the parking lot scene? That, that That's part what I'm talking me. about. That part got me. Yes. Well, because I, I knew, I, I think, I don't know if they show, showed that in the trailer. I don't know. I'm not 100% sure in the parking lot, but I think they might have alluded to it. But I knew something was going to happen. Like, because yeah. the, the, the coolest thing about this, it sets tension to such a level. Because you know it's the Invisible Man, right? So he's not going to talk and you can't fucking see him, right? But they, they there's no goddamn sound. There's yeah. no music. And you just hear the fucking rain coming down. You're like, son of a fucking bitch. Yeah. Not only do I, I've been holding my pee in and I can hear rain. And it's starting to hurt. <laughs> Two, I know something scary is going to happen and force my urethra to expel my urine. By the way, that... That hospital scene in the hallway, yeah. where shit just like goes buku for a second, uh, I kind of didn't like. Did it that much. orderly not look just like James A. Janice from Dead Meat? Sometimes I felt like he was way too overpowered. I was I like, you that. know what I mean? He's just a dude. Like yeah. it's a dude. It's dude. Yeah. So I mean, it's not like he's like a big goddamn. You know, he's not. And he's Luke, kind of a little dude. He's too. not Luke Ferringo running around, but it, you know, either way. Still a cool movie. Yeah. I don't want to shit on it, so no. it's a definitely movie to check out. I, sure. I definitely recommend to go see it. I think they did a great job with it. And again, man, the direction and the cinematography and the feel of the movie, it's all done so well. It's a beautiful film to it's go a, look it's at. Like watching, it's like looking at a beautiful mountain Did that dude not live in Tony Stark's mansion, though? Like on the edge of the rock in like Malibu or whatever, like the way it looked? Oh yeah, it does. That look, was it does. It does. Look it was right. almost like they rented. And Tony actually, Stark's and actually, the when you get the reveal, it's like he stole from Tony Stark. <laughs> right, but so, yeah. yeah, definitely go see Invisible Man. Don't believe a little bit of the hype because it's being overrated a little bit. But just a well, it's a great done. movie. It's right up there movie. with Upgrade. Yeah. Yeah. Even maybe a little bit better than Upgrade. Hard to yeah, tell. Yeah, it's probably about the same. Hard to tell. Domino's yeah. Pizza. It's good time. And then uh, Guns Akimbo. Akimbo of the guns. I wish I had. Oh, Michael, you know what? I wish I had two goddamn guns with 50 bullets each. I'd shoot you 106 times, Sheriff! I'd kill that motherfucker with two guns attached to my hands. I'd kill you dead. Michael, you look like a fucking Dillard's commercial. It's a good movie. Uh, Elijah Wood's in it.
Elijah Wood, Daniel Radcliffe. They look the same. They're cousins. Fuck them. One's Harry Potter, the other one's North. AKA Frodo, sucking Sam White's game, she's dick on the voodoo. So, uh, what happens when you get your fucking hands? Like, bolt it to some guns, and you don't have magic powers, Harry Potter? You fuck shit up with some cyberpunk shit. That's what happens, guns akimbo, you son of a bitch. <laughs> That's what we're talking about right now. You guns, listen to me, you son of a bitch. Guns akimbo. Uh, wow. What a fucking roller coaster of a movie. It's, it's crazy good. It was actually way good. It was way better than I thought it was going to be. It does sound like a, like one of those weird sexual moves. Like, man, I gave her the guns of Kimbo. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, you did what? No, it's like, you did the what? Like, I gave her the guns of Kimbo. Who did you invite over to your house? Harvey? <laughs> you nasty. I can't believe you guns of Kimbo. Well, you her. say uh, uh, fucking dirty yoga. <laughs> but um, no, either way, hey, this movie is fucking great. It's crazy weird. It's so weird, but it's so cool. Yeah. I, and, you know, uh, we got lucky enough to get to watch it early. And when Mike was explaining to me the plot, I'm like, what the fuck is this shit? And then I, I watched it, because I had no expectations, like, at all going in. Like, I got the basic premise, and I watched it, and I was like, wow, this is actually really good. And Daniel Radcliffe really surprised me. As, I mean, I know he's a good actor, but he really surprised me in this. Also, Elizabeth Mosshaus and Doss is in this as well. No, that was the last one. That's not who, who she is. Samara Weaving. Samara Weaving heaving. <laughs> Samara Weaving heaving. I'm sorry, uh, they, they both are blonde. But uh, Samara Weaving is then she likes to do cocaine and fucking hunt people. Yeah. And she looks like shit. For from uh, when she was in, like, You're Next, cocaine's a hell of a drug. And she snorts a lot of it. And you can tell it by the way that she's got that metal fame. <laughs> It's not your next. She was in Ready or Not. Well, goddamn! <laughs> They're all the same. I don't give a fuck. Let me say it this way. I, for, those, uh, for those of you guys who aren't familiar with Guns Akimbo, and I thought for sure when I heard the name Guns Akimbo that I'd heard that before. Maybe it was just news articles or what. I thought for sure it was an anime or a comic book or whatever. When I looked it up, I already looked it up, man. I already looked it up. There's nothing about yeah, it. Yeah, did you go to Bing? And so I went to Google uh, and Wikipedia. But no, the, what the movie's about is basically uh, that we're in this, this, this a little bit into the future a little bit, right? And it's a play on the internet and the social media networks and everything that's going on. And basically there's this the show called Schism hmm. that people watch on their social networks, right? It's called Schism and it's basically people killing each other. Yeah, right? very like running man kind of thing. On yeah, sports exactly. And, and, and they watch them killing each other for fun. Uh, Dana Radcliffe, uh, oh. from the mounds of Satan. Uh, <laughs> he finds you in the desert. Dana Radcliffe's character is this guy who works um, making uh, shitty video games for the squirrel company. He goes home and he he drinks some IPAs and he trolls on the internet's what he does. Well, he, he starts talking shit to the guys who are running Schism and the admins or whatever. Talk to the wrong peeps. Next thing you know, they find his IP address, they show up at his house, and they're like, you wanna talk shit online, you little shit. They beat the fuck out of him, knock him out, and then when he wakes up, he's got two guns bolted to each of his hands. That's cool. Uh, that's it's, it's actually, it's kind of disturbing, but it's kind of fucking cool, too. It's, it's also like, stupid, but yeah, still. And he's like, you gotta own that shit, man. <laughs> like own it, like and, you know, and but it really it John Woo for for a second though, yeah, it, it pretty much is John Woo when he makes action movies. He has two guns bolted to his hands, like I need action. He was actually watching Hard Target. Did you notice that? Yeah, yeah he's that. like, I need you to knock out the rattlesnake with your fist, John Claude. <laughs> uh, that's a great movie, anyway. But either way, uh, yeah, it's it's you do see though. Like how fucking hard that would be, like wiping your ass, taking a pee pee in the toilet. That like, seems. Put, Graphic. It was scary. I was worried. I was worried. Uh, you saw his wiener. Yeah, you saw a wiener. Well, you saw a wiener. It just looked like a fucking strap on. It did dildo. look fake. Yeah, but you still saw a wiener. But it's like uh, you, I was kind of scared because he was like, "You're pointing like, do imagine like." It's a gun barrel at your dick, yeah. and you're trying to pee, and you're trying to pee, and you're like, oh my god, I could shoot off my nut here. His I mean, how can I live? His rationale, though, was exactly how it is when you're drunk, though, because he was like, hey, you know, it's okay if I pee all over the toilet seat, as long as I don't yeah. shoot my dick off. But the, it shows the hard, like, you know, the hard situations of, of what that would present, dressing yourself and whatever. So he's pretty much going to have to embrace his destiny and fight this chick named Nyx. Who's played by Samara Weaving. She's great. Red, dude, Samara Weaving is fucking... Dude, she's my favorite actress today. She looks like, she looks I like, love her. She's a great actress. Uh, she's, yeah, she's very crackhead in this. But, but her eyebrows are shaved off, but yet she's still attractive. I still found her attractive even in this movie. She's walking around literally when she shows up. She's got well, she's got a hundred dollar bill hanging out of her nose where she was snorting coke and she doesn't even realize it. Her eyebrows are shaved off and she's fucking nuts. Whoa. And I still find her very attractive. Whoa! Whoa. Where did you get it your sucks. drugs, bro? And it cuts. Where did you get your drugs? Because I want them. But no, yeah, she's ugly as fucking to me. But it, like, I'm sorry. Like in other way, like she's a great. She's really pretty in real life. But in this one, holy shit, it reminds me of Charlize Theron and Monster. Fuck no. Still would have. Yep. You're absolutely. Disgusting. Any day of the You're week. Disgusting. For sure. I had to lock it up. But anyway, uh, so 
the adventure continues in the Guns Akimbo movie, and he has to survive. He has to find a way to outwit Nyx, who's the champion of Schism, and somehow get his goddamn hands unbolted from the fucking guns that have been bolted onto his fucking hands. Now, I will say also, uh, the soundtrack is awesome. Amazing. And, and dude, it is really, really good. Amazing. There's, there's so many 80s uh, songs that they throw into this film, and it's kind of a remix, but it's it, it's so, it's that is so punk rock. Yeah. Like, they have a lot of, it, it, like, it really does feel like a cyberpunk, like, film that would come on, like, I feel like the movie would have come on in, like, the late 90s, early 2000s on MTV next to, like, the Max yeah, you know what I mean. Like if it was animated or something. Dude, it, it feels like it feels like. Uh, what's the movie with the fucking the kid in the? You remember the kid in the end of the world movie where where one girl was eating his butt and the other one he was giving her Capri Sun. What's that dude's name? Michael Cera. Ron Jeremy. No, Michael Cera. <laughs> what's the movie he's in? Oh, the it, video game movie. That's right. It, you're right. Scott Edgar Pilgrim Wright. versus the world. It feels like Scott Pilgrim versus the world plus Let's John sign. Wick. Yeah. Plus fucking the Matrix. Uh, Shaun of the Dead plus the Matrix. Like it's it's such a fun out there fucking wild movie and it doesn't give a shit. It and and, and even a little bit of Ready Player One. Like it has sure. all those elements in it that make it a really unique. Like. It's so individual of a movie. Like I've never seen anything particularly like it. Also has little elements of hardcore Henry in it. Like not all, I see not that. all of it, but just some of it. Like just this over the top kind of grotesque violence that is really cool. And they they got a they got, they got some great bad guys in it too. Because I I, and I I don't I didn't know how to describe them until the guy in the movie said you described it perfectly. He's like because he you got you guys you guys just walk around looking like in bosses from Streets of Rage. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like yes, they fucking do. They look exactly like it. And the one guy he was like. You just look like a worn out dildo that someone drew on with a shark. That's exactly. But he, that guy reminded me of Tobin Bell. Yeah, he did. You imagine that? Yeah, and, and so the bad guys are great. Like, I, I don't want to give away too much of this film because no, it's so new. It. It's so new. It's so fresh and so, so fresh and so clean, clean. You got to get in there and you got to eat it with no forks or sporks. You got to go in there with your fingers and ingest this movie because it's going to be worth it. Uh, the movie's an 8.5 for me. Like, I had that much of a yep. good time. And, dude, the ending, the ending is so fucking worth it. The, like, the it, song alone. Yeah. Dude, you hear that not song. Not spoil it. Like, you hear that song, immediately you want to pop your fucking collar up and go back to 1986. And you're like, fuck yeah! It reminded me of the rooftop scene from Last Action yeah. Hero. You remember that scene? Yeah, dude. It reminded me of that, dude, but I, the song, oh, dude, fuck. I, like, I got, like, all hyped. I was watching my girlfriend, I was, I was all hyped. Like, I was already hyped. And then when that song, I, I was like, oh my god. I was like, that's a banana! That's it. Like, so I can't great. say what this, I, you guys might, you might be able to pick out what I said, but I hope you didn't. But, dude, it's a song, it's a song from a soundtrack of a movie that was amazing in the 80s yeah. with a, a superstar back then and do when you hear it and what's happening on screen when you get to exp it, do it's like watching the fucking it's like watching a, a team come back in like in the Super Bowl it's like watching Eli Manning throw the fucking the ball down the field to Tyree yeah. in the Super Bowl and you're like it's so fun. I don't know. I I, and the, the, oh, and the, I want to do karate in my garage afterwards. Every character too. The hobo guy who was the he was the clerk in uh, Yes Man. He was great. You remember? He was great. He's like I don't believe in that. He was like he goes for all you know I could have been a computer programmer the savant. He's like goes oh is that what you are? I'm sorry. He's like no I just got hooked on crack. Do you want to smoke some crack? <laughs> Dude, Samara Weaving. I just I just want to point this out again. She's my favorite actress working in Hollywood right now. She is fucking she's, she's charismatic. She's hilarious as fuck. She's a total badass. I would. I would pay sixty dollars for your autograph at a convention. I want to party with you. <laughs> party with you. <laughs> I love her so much, man. And Daniel Radcliffe killed this movie too. Uh, it's just, a, dude, it's a fun movie. And man, you will not believe the special effects. And that's why I looked up the director of this. Yeah, has done other stuff before, but not as a director. But he worked on shit like the Avengers, like the, the look, special it, effects it and stuff. Good. Well, it I, looks I, top fucking notch. Expensive as hell. It, the, the special effects, while they were great, I thought the uh, the camera angles, the movements of the camera angles, yeah. like the one. Scene I'm thinking of specifically is when uh, he can when he when he when he's coming to the cops, and the way the camera angle like zooms in on, <clears throat> and then they switch up to the people that are watching him. Yeah, it just looks so fucking cool. Yeah. Dude. I don't know why I just like that scene. And, and it does. It has a lot of uh, Paul Verhovenness into it uh, for what it has to say about like internet trolls yeah. and like people online and the way that stuff works. I think it's like, but uh, it's so on the outskirts. It's not trying to preach to you. It's just kind of poking fun at our society, and you appreciate that. And they do it in a well done way, like Paul Verhoeven would have done right. it, not like they would have done with most other movies. Yeah, today. It, like, again, it goes back to the, to the uh, subtleties. 
that we talked about, the other films could you or people that are trying to make or recreate these great films, the subtleties that these classic directors were able to do and instill in a film without having it yeah. like forced down your throat. And they do a great job of doing that because what I what I took away from it, otherwise it'd be an awesome fucking movie. If I really wanted to look deep for a political meaning, you could find one. If you want to find a message, it's definitely in there. But I didn't give a shit. I, but I could find I could see it. It's yeah. like we're a violent society and like it's it's placating to And that. there's a couple dumb scenes. Like at one point when he goes outside and he's like, it's the first time I've been outside and I've actually not stared at my phone. If it's like everything is in HD, I was like, that's dumb. And and there is yeah. like there's some shit in the movie that makes no fucking sense whatever. It's one of those movies you have to suspend belief for and just be like, this is a dumb it's not completely dumb, but it's sort of it's dumb, weird. wild, batshit fucking crazy movie. But I'm telling you, man, it's a movie that it's no holds barred, it's full on action, it's got comedy action in it, it doesn't give a fuck. It is it's playing with fire. Yeah. It's playing with fire, and it's enjoyable as fuck, and it's well made. It feel uh, this this it feels like a fucking. Really I don't know. I don't know movie. why. I don't really know why this movie wouldn't or didn't get released on like on, on the big. I, I, scale. Well, I think it's getting wide release. Hopefully it does. But uh, we we actually they actually gave us a screener well, for to, to review it. Which fuck you very much. And that's not why we're giving it a great review. No, I, I mean honestly, it. if it sucked balls, I would be like, thank you very much. You movie sucked balls. I'll, but still I'm gonna go out on a limb here and I'll say this. I think that the people. Most of our community, most of the guys that like what, like the same kind of movies we do, are really gonna fucking yeah, adore this movie. I think it's gonna be at worst. I think it's gonna be a, a cult classic, and I think people are gonna enjoy it for a long time. You're gonna like the way you look. We guarantee. I it. guarantee it. So, Men's Warehouse. Let's go ahead and get to ba -ba 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 -ba! Patreon. Of the week. For course, I Taylor. The sands of the rain, and he chose the frighteners. I'm What's only the movie happy that when he... it rains. Yeah. <laughs> Every single week, we pick, pick a new Patreon from the top tier to be the sponsor for that week's show, and they get to pick the movie review that we're gonna do that week. And if you want to get in on that, that link is down below. You sexy some bitches. And you could get a free balloon. Probably with a dick on it. So, yeah. Courgette, let's talk about the frighteners, we'll man. We'll sign the dick too. Yeah, we'll right on the right shaft, on, right on the urethra, wherever you want it. Uh, the Frighteners, man. Michael J. Fox. Whew. First off, I would imagine, like, think Beetlejuice, Tim Burton that didn't direct it, and Adam's family fucked, and they had a child, and it was called The Frighteners, and Peter Jackson directed it. And it was featuring Michael J. Fox. That's what I'm saying. That's The Frighteners. That's The, the Frighteners. Yeah. It's right there. And, and, and also, uh, fucking Jake Busey's in this. Does well. Yeah. Does well. We actually interviewed him once at Scarefest. He's an asshole. <laughs> but uh, I, mean, I don't. I don't care. Like we're not Hollywood types. He, was, I, uh, he wasn't a total jerk. Was, it was just that he was just like I can't do on camera. Okay, I'm not gonna say asshole. I want to say tool. Michael Bean was an asshole when I tried no, to dude, interview him. No, but Jake. No, dude. Jake Busey was a uh, like a tool. He was standing in for Daddy because Daddy was supposed to be there, yeah. and then he was there in in for his dad. And I we. Uh, I went up very politely and asked that motherfucker. It's like, yeah, um, I don't do interviews because I don't know. Like, I need my work, so I don't want to badmouth directors. I didn't even ask a fucking question yet, you goddamn Reaper fucking soaked tampon. Nonetheless, that's just a side note. Yeah. Jake Busey did a really good job in this as the uh, protagonist. And no, the antagonist. Starship Troopers as well. It was great. It was good. Antagonist. Um, so the basic idea of the film is is that Michael J. Fox is a psychic investigator and eliminator that goes about. I'm gonna be and, indicted. <clears throat> yeah. Sorry. He uh, he parasites himself uh, at you know uh, cemeteries and funerals and things like that. You know for the dearly departed, uh, the, the the loved ones of the departed. We're like, uh, hey, if you need to reach out, I can do that for you. I'm a psychic investigator, and he, and what you find out is that Michael J. Fox can see the dead. Uh, he can see to the other side, and he has these cool-ass fucking ghosts that help him out on his investigations by basically setting people up. He's a scam artist. That's what he is. He's a slimy-ass scam artist that sets people up to make them feel like their house is haunted, and then he collects like four, five hundred dollars or whatever to clean the. This house is clear. He gets <laughs> caught up though uh, in the fact that there's a real fucking thread that later that comes from the other side in uh, the Grim Reaper. So you think 
and we go from there. And the way the ghosts look, they're, they're straight up Casperized ghosts. Yeah. Like they are like full on ghost aspirations. And that 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 lends itself to this Ghostbusters a mm. atmosphere. And they even mentioned the lettering. The lettering looks like it too. Yeah, and, and this is a movie like uh, okay for for one Michael J. Fox it, it, as a lead in a movie. At that time, it was really cool to see Michael J. Fox in the lead of the movie. Yeah, that was the number one attractor for I think a lot of people. He was in this kind of like almost boyish like con artist kind of role, yeah. and he was the lead for the movie. So that attracted people to it. And then you've got this ghost these apparitions and the way they look like that straight up Ghostbusters feel the ectoplasm all that stuff that was an attractor to the movie and then the cover art for this fucking movie man it's on, on, point. on the VHS's when they had that lithogram hologram like oh yeah that was badass and yeah. it was that it was that scary ass frighteners face that was like blah, blah, blah. and then the undercurrent of the true crime stuff going on plus you got the Peter Jacks Daniel Danny Elfman did the score but all that intertwined into one. All those good things. It's got this nice feel to it with all that, those packages. All those packages. All under the tree. It's, and it, it has a nice package to yeah. it, but I, I gotta say, man, like you look at the package a lot. You I cradle look at it, the and package, you love it, and but no, you talk to it. What I was gonna say is, like, I love this movie when it came out as a kid, but I, I, it was one of those movies that I never actually would end up watching all the way through. Like, mm -hmm. I think I love the idea of this movie, and I love the casting and the 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 feng shui of this fucking movie more than I actually do the execution of the movie. Because I have a lot of problems with it. For one, I actually thought the ghost apparitions, two thirds of them were really fucking annoying. They're always screaming. They're fucking so, the movie is so goddamn loud. Like, the, the ghosts are always screaming and complaining, like, why are you gonna put me in a fucking truck? Like, the whole They've fucking- they dead for a while. I know, but everyone's loudly bitching and screaming and complaining planning and I love Danny Elfman. It's and like I, being at a, a Democrat nomination. But dude, this is one of the top <laughs> five most annoying scores in a movie of all time for me. And I love Danny Elfman, but dude, the entire fucking movie, it was just like... The score was fucking on level 10 the entire goddamn movie. You couldn't get a fucking break from it. I felt it like... I, to sleep. I felt like the... the I, I kind of liked the score, though. I felt, oh. like, I felt like the score was on point with none less than Beetlejuice or like even like Casper. It was like Beetlejuice after he took in a Scarface amount of fucking... Uh, uh, Cocaine. That's fine. It was nonstop. I mean, but it was. Oh, I don't know. I mean, because the the Beetlejuice Danny Elfman score was pretty loud too, and it had a lot of like thing and shit like that. But this too. was constant. But I mean, it, it definitely had its own like unique signature as far as like this is a Danny Elfman like a score. Like you know, it's Danny Elfman. Right. Like even before the music came on, you're like, it feels like Danny Elfman. But he just and a lot like Air Force One. When I watch Air Force One, and this is and that's what kind of what I was getting at is that this is one of the movies when I look I look back and I watch it and I actually don't enjoy it as much as I used to. I, I realize a lot more flaws than I used to. Same way with Air Force One. That fucking French patriotic horn was just constant in the score and it annoyed the fuck out of me. The same way Danny Elfman, like, he doesn't allow any of the scenes to breathe. It's just like constant fucking, like, fucking bashing you over the head with the score. Well, I, sometimes I want it bashed over my face. I know you do, you uh, yeah. sick son of a bitch. A vagina. <laughs> Not a dick. A vagina. I like the score. I, I thought it was pretty cool. And I, you know, overall, like, even watching it now, like, I'd seen it multiple times when I was a kid. I watched it all. I, I always loved this movie. I still like it. I still think it's solid. I don't really think I have any detraction on it. I, like, I, it, the special effects don't really age that well. Like, I mean, they weren't going for like a hundred million dollar, five hundred million dollar movie. Very haunted mansion ish, you know. It, yeah, but it was still good enough, and I think the acting is what carries it. And the story for me was good. Dammers, the fucking the, the the goddamn weirdo that comes in from nowhere to fucking investigate Jeffrey the Holmes hauntings. is fucking top. He's great. Man. I love him. You know what he reminded me of? He reminded me of Colin Farrell that had crack. <laughs> like, he really looks like, if you look at him in the fucking face when he's talking with his weird haircut, he looks like Colin Farrell and crack. Oh, I was thinking of, uh, like, steroids and crack. Who's the corkscrew guy? Um, who was also in Back to the Future, by the way. Um, oh, what's uh, his name? Oh, uh, god damn, dude. Crispin Glover. Crispin Glover. Yes, he reminded he me of Crispin Glover, he does. but dude is a Jeffrey Jeffrey Combs. Jeffrey Combs. <laughs> Jeffrey Combs in this movie is so fucking lovable, and dude... He is full on Jim Carrey. I watched this with my 10 year old and she even said, she was like, he reminds me of the guy who plays the Grinch. And I'm like, you know that's fucking Jim Carrey, right? And she's like, that makes sense. He's so Jim Carrey in this movie and I fucking love it. He he really, he did, he did have like a, he's just got a really unique like presence when he's on film. Especially when he's like, go like when he's, he's like 27, third, third street, seven, seven o'clock. <laughs> he's like, you're mumbling motherfucker. He's like, what? He's like, March second. <laughs> I, I like. That. There's also a scene where he, she was. He was like, uh, Milton, would you like to sit? He's like, I'll stand. Thank you. <laughs> but I like when he was talking to him when he kept backing out in the hallway. He's like, I'm good. I like when. Uh, oh, he's like, Do you know where they found <laughs> the box cutter? 
I, I like what he, and also with the girl, she was he's like, oh. he's like, I, and then he, she, the, the, he's, the sheriff was like, Milton, are you okay? He's like, you, he goes, you're invading my personal bubble. <laughs> you're violating my personal territory. And then when the girl screams at him, she's like, what are you talking about? He's like, uh, yeah. he's like, he's like, I have a problem with women screaming. <laughs> <laughs> like anytime a woman makes a loud noise, he's like, oh, uh. but you know, this is actually not Peter Jackson's first foray into uh, a, like no, a, dead alive, yeah, dead alive, a comedy horror movie. So he does a he does a good job with that. Obviously, Peter Jackson's a skilled hand at this. <laughs> like I like the museum part where where the judge he's like, he goes, nice teeth. He goes, I like it when they lie to you like that. And you see his ass fucking humping the mummy, <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, I still got it, boys. My juices are flowing. <laughs> and then I also like the uh, uh, Cyrus when they're like taking the mummy and they're going after the cops it's like and they shoot her up he's like and she was so young and beautiful <laughs> <laughs> you know who he is dude he's the guy in the back room and waiting when he's like, oh yeah, that makes you sense. Gotta tell your own oh, is that him? That, that yeah. makes sense. He, he's a wizened individual. But yeah, yeah, I don't know, man. Like, I just liked it. Maybe it is a hot mess. Maybe it's a hot mess of ramen noodles that I want to fucking eat. That's <laughs> and what. D, and D Wallace is a great, great in this. Yeah, too. I just liked it, man. Like, I don't know. Like, there's something about it that that's. It's so like maybe it's so messed up and it's so weird and all over the place that it just feels right. Like, you can't get away with making those kind of movies now. Because people would like crucify it in the fucking box office, but it, I feel like I don't know, man. Like Dude, I just feel like it's it's a. If someone were to just smooth this fucking bitch around the edge, I don't want to smooth. Edit it a little bit better, let it flow a little better, and take out that fucking annoying score. And I think it could have been. Like I think this is one of the most potential filled fucking movies of greatness of all time that just does too fucking much too fast all the goddamn time. I I don't know. Did, I, you, get, did you get teary eyed at the end? No, I, I did didn't. at all. At all, I did when when she's like, "Be happy." I was like, "That's fucking sad." I get it, but I just I, and, and I love Michael J. Fox, and I love the idea. Well, maybe you should stop being more fucking critical. <laughs> and, and when they uh, did the the flatliners thing, that's a cool. I did like that. That, that was cool. Yeah, I like that a lot. Uh, I don't know, man. There's just something too fucking whimsical about did it. Did you think that they don't let you relax and like they don't just I don't know. They're I, I don't know. They're I think she tries too hard. I think. I don't know. No, I, I think I think it. I think that it's just, it's not for everybody. Like I think that's the best way to say it. Like you know, it's either gonna appeal to you in a certain way that you like, and then in other ways, it's gonna be uh, just not all the way together. I love the certain I, I, elements of it. I really do. I think that uh, I was gonna say was Michael J. Fox the best choice for the lead? Yes. Fuck. And then I, bar none yeah, yes. and I was like, because there was really nobody out. Like I mean, I'm sure there there's a lot of amazing actors that could have done that role, but Michael J. Fox, man, like. There's something Michael J. Fox always had this charming, disarming personality about him that you could believe him. Yeah. And like, there's one scene specifically when, uh, when uh, he was like, "I don't give a, I don't give a damn about you or anybody." And he said, "He said, go home, just go home." I, and then uh, when she goes to see him in the jail and he's crying, like the vulnerability that Michael J. Fox could bring to that role was what was needed. I don't know, man. I, I liked it a lot. I'm gonna give the movie a 9.0. I fucking really like this movie a lot. No, it's one of my favorite movies. Yeah. Like, and, and you know, it's one of the, it's one of the like my go-to movies for Halloween month. If you're gonna watch a movie for like October, like The Frighteners has got to be yeah. on your list. Yeah. I'm gonna piss people off. I'm gonna give it a lower score. Than Go ahead. I want. Go to, ahead. Because I want a lot of herpy dick out. I give it a seven, man. I, it's I, not that bad. It's not that bad. I, I give it a seven because again, like I love Michael J. Fox, and this is the perfect role for Michael J. Fox, and Jeffrey Combs just fucking. Killed that so Fox, good. man. It's so, it's so good. fucking good. It's Bill Paxton level amazing it's good. Really, yeah. uh, and and you know his role in Reanimator. You didn't like Danny but, Elfman. Yeah, I, I, it's not that I don't like Danny Elfman. It's just that the the editing and I feel like the direction was poor. I, I, I don't, you Jackson, dare? I know you dare. You dare in my Lord of the Rings. Uh, but I, I think it was edited poorly. I think the direction was you bad. Get, like I think the proto score sting of your was butt. too fucking much. And I thought there was so much cool. There was just so much cool shit in this movie, and they just. They just, I don't, I can't explain it, man. It's like they try to shove it into a fucking lunchbox and just like nail you over the head with it. I think, I well, I think they were going for uh, maybe a, a lighthearted take on something that was serious and maybe that rubs people the they wrong way. They should have tried to do a little less, man. Well, they should have chilled I, the I didn't, fuck like, out. I don't know. I think that it's one of those movies, like when I watched it, like, uh, you know, it's not Beetlejuice. Like Beetlejuice is, it's, but it wants to be. He did. It wanted to be Beetlejuice, but Beetlejuice is its own unique thing. Like it will ever, forever be its own fucking character. But this one, 
like I felt like they were taking something that was serious, but they were trying to make a lighthearted, like lighthearted touch to it. Yeah. And I, I, I liked it. I don't know because I was like, I felt like it invited people in that weren't like necessarily looking for like a deep meaning spiritual thing. Sure. And and then it was able to grab like kids like are thirteen or fourteen. Dude, I, don't get me wrong. I, I, no, no, I'm not saying that you're not. I'm and just the saying the idea I, of the movie and what it wanted to be. I fucking adore yeah. it. I, just the execution. So yeah, we're kind of on a disagreement here. It's not that far away, seven mm-hmm. to a nine, but. Hey, it's whatever. And Corjai, that's a great fucking movie, man. Oh, I want. I wanted to rewatch it. It's an amazing movie. Yeah. And thank you so much for fucking bringing it up. It's it's one of those classic, timeless films that you know either you love it, or you hate it, or you're in the middle about it. It's yeah. still a movie that you're gonna want to watch. I just think it had the potential to be a Beetlejuice, man. I think it really. Did. Well, I didn't want it to like. I like, I, don't, I wanted to be, like while it's trying to be Beetlejuice, it's still its own thing. Like when you say the Frighteners, you yeah. know what you're getting into. It's the Frighteners. It's just like a flea market that you go into, and like the like the junk is just like. It's a lot of junk, and it's just like over and you can't really like find anything in it because there's like, so much going on. It's like Beetlejuice and Casper went to the pound and they got a Dalmatian. <laughs> but either way, uh, it's a it's thank you, Corjai. Yes, man. The, uh, amazing film, uh, amazing select. From an we amazing are very happy. Dude. Yeah, we are very happy to review it for you. And uh, I'm I'm, getting, I'm trying to do my Mr. Bean things like oh magic. <laughs> <laughs> What's your goddamn Corjai Taylor? You see, Michael, I learned from Steven Scott himself. The fat cop from Louisiana. Coach Adela says, uh, hey, the Frighteners, check it out. Mike and Jay, you stupid pieces of shit from YouTube. So they did. I watched it. Give it. I watched it. They frightened people. Michael J. Fox was doing great. He couldn't get back in time. He wanted to have sex with his mom, Leah Thompson. Um, great. <laughs> but yeah, it was awesome. What do you guys think? Where do you guys land on this one? Comment down below. Let us fucking know. And that brings us, Jay, Wait. to what the fuck we watched this week as a whole. What else well, did you watch? Uh, listen, I uh, I didn't watch much this week. I, I tried. I fucked the toaster. I did. I tried that once. It was so warm. I tried that once in the 60s and it did not go well. But I read a book on anti gravity. And it was so good, I couldn't put it down. Neat. It was so good, Stop. I couldn't put it down. <laughs> and then a book hit me, and I blame it on my shelf. <laughs> uh, no, uh, yeah, I didn't, I, I, I can't remember. I didn't, while well, we watched Guns Akimbo, like everything that we reviewed in this episode is pretty much what I watched. Pretty much what I uh, spent my time watching without doing anything for the channel was uh, I watched a lot of podcast stuff Joe Rogan stuff Bobby Lee stuff Tiger Belly I watched a bunch of that stuff really cool shit uh, watched this really interesting thing on, on Mike Tyson which I didn't fucking know that he was hypnotized to fucking murder people before he went into the ring that Makes guy sense. It, yeah he looked like you owed him money from like the fifth grade yeah. and you were 28 years old and he was like yeah. fucking he looked like you had his drugs in your butt dude there's no way that you would fight that motherfucker even now, but in his prime, yeah. when that bitch came in there like a Hurricane yeah. Katrina, and he's like walking through there like this, and he's came like, out to no there's no music, and he's wearing black trunks, executioner style, with no socks, and you know he's got fungus, and he doesn't care if he smells, and he's looking at you like this, and you're like going, and he's going, he's just like doing this shit, like he looks like a goddamn lion, I'm gonna dude. knock your teeth he's in like your doing that, butt. He's doing that shit in the fucking wall where he's like rolling his shoulders, like, yeah. <laughs> Yo, I'm coming for lunch. Speaking of what, that's one thing that we did watch this week that we can't Tyson? talk about. The Tyson Fury. We went out for Jay's ah, birthday yes. last week, and we uh, it was funny because we met at like 8, right? Mm. We met at like 8, and we had a couple drinks, and we had a DD, don't worry. Uh, we went to B-Dubs. Her name was DD. We were going to go to the strip club. We were going to the strip club. The strip club fucking lied. All week they said they were like promoting we're going to have the fight, but I guess enough people didn't VIP for that bottle service. So we called the strip club before. First, I called, and we couldn't believe that they said, no, we're not having the fight. So then Jay called. No, 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 no. They said yes when you called. Oh, they said yes when I called, but then we, we wanted to ask if they had enough TVs for it or something. So Jay calls back, but he didn't want it to seem like it was us. So he used a British voice. So he's like, I was inquiring about the pugilist match this evening. <laughs> uh, no, uh, uh, I was like, no, I didn't say pugilist. No, I didn't you say. You No, no, I think yeah, you I mean, might like say pugilist. I said say, you didn't say it. Oh, maybe, maybe I, I, I was like, excuse me, I'm I, like, I'm asking, are you having a fight this evening on your screens? <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, no, I was like, Oh well, that's bollocks. Thank you. <laughs> but we go to we go to B Dubs and we get there at like eight thirty, 
And the, the, you know, if you watch boxing, you know the actual main event doesn't start to like 11, 30, 12 or whatever. Right. And we're sitting there, and we've been drinking for a couple hours before, and then we're sitting there, and we're watching all these shitty pre-card fights, they always undercard start. fights. Sometimes, um, sometimes they're great, but these were not yeah. good. And it felt like the longest time. But we got there at the perfect time because, dude, when we got there, it was, it was empty. The UK game was over, so right. it was clearing out. But I was like, excited about that. 20 minutes in, man, like there was a line out the door, and none of those fuckers got tables. I know. They all just sat there and wait. But the fight was good. Uh, Tyson Fury beat that fuck out of I felt like I felt like uh, seeing all the fans come in to watch the boxing match. I was really like overwhelmed, like like having good spirits. I was like, oh, man, this yeah. is fucking awesome. Like, it, it's always a cool thing to watch it with a big crowd of boxing fans. Yeah. I felt like Max Kellerman. Like I just wanted to sit there and commentate. Like yeah. you know, it's like I, I see these people every day. And I don't I don't even know what to say. What he's doing is putting on a clinic yeah. in the ring right now. A clinic in the ring. You can't get better with that right hand. That right hand's a devastating <laughs> thing coming from Oklahoma. But at the same time, he's sir, the sir. I just skills. asked what you wanted to drink. I want something that's going to be special for the boxing event. <laughs> but yeah, we're sitting there and we spent God knows how much and, and, and how much beers or whatever we're drinking. But three hundred and twenty dollars. Like, three hours into it, I'm like talking to the table. I'm like, hey, "Who you got tonight?" <laughs> you know, dude. And I, you start to feel it. And you feel good. You know what? Problem is, I was drinking so much that I was like, there was there was this these 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 two guys over across from us. And I was going for Tyson Fury. I thought Wilder was going to win. I did too. But I, I thought, I was hoping Tyson, in my hearts of hearts and hearts, I wanted Tyson Fury to win. Same. So I was like, it's going to go to cards. Tyson Fury wins. If it doesn't go to cards, Wilder wins. But there was these two guys over there, and I just didn't like their fucking faces. I didn't like their <laughs> vibe, and I didn't like their jibe. And I knew they were going for Wilder. Yeah. And they were just sitting there like all like smug and shit when Wilder was coming in with his shredder uniform on. And, and like, and they were trying to be badass. And like I was like, mm -mm. so as soon as Tyson Fury started, he's like, oh, I, I did. I was like, oh yeah, and I was like, oh yeah, and like I was looking at them, like it was like one of those things, like I was looking at the screen, but my I, I had that cock eye, so I was like, oh yeah, <laughs> and they, they were like, I, I was trying to catch their eye, because you know how you get pumped into the boxing, oh yeah, and you're like, I can fight, which you can't. You taste you, blood when the fight, when yeah. the big fight starts, you get fucking. Like crazy. I know I'm gonna get fucking pancaked if I get into a fight. Like I know I'm gonna get hurt, but I didn't care at that moment because liquid courage was running strong and so I was like oh yeah like, fucking no fear and then they were like this they, the, the one guy in the back because there's two of them the one guy that was sitting like kind of uh, like from like this uh, from the guy he was like he did one of those things he was like this was like fuck yeah and he went <laughs> I, I, like he did that fucking he did an Ivan Drago I was like I must break that's the guys I was talking to before the fight like he went to smoke I was like who you guys got and whatever and I, I don't remember no, what dude, said, I was giving them shit it was funny because uh, Emily uh, uh, Kay, Katie's friend and our friend was sitting there and like she doesn't care at all about the fight So, but I was all like jazzed up about the fight because it was finally we've been waiting for like six hours and like drinking slow drinking Coors Light waiting and then like, she breaks out a book and I was like are you fucking really turn the match you don't just, you don't insult the boxing but guys. when they start like if there's something about it like when you've been drinking a beat ups for six hours and then the fight starts and then the guy you want to win starts pounding the other in his face like I was like punching the table I was like yeah Dude, it was like a fucking Mad Max all of a sudden there was, was like there was weird. so much testosterone that was like built up because yeah. you knew the expectation that was coming we felt like caged chimpanzees <laughs> getting ready to get up and tear your fucking face off <laughs> I, did, I, was, I got very girly because I got very girly uh, right before because I was getting mad and I was getting pissed and bored because I was getting bored. Like, so I just want to go. Dude. I did one of these things like when you're laying like this, like you're laying on the. And I, I feel like I feel like it was like a Melrose Place moment. It's like I just want to go. Like I don't know. I, yeah, not, I, I, looked, I, I looked you dead in the face and I said. Drink slower. No, I was That's like, what I said to you. Remember? Right. I said, drink slower. You didn't put your fucking. I did. I said. I said. I said. No, said this is not a sausage. That's a well-sized. That's, that's, that's a slim you finger. Didn't, didn't that's not a sausage finger. finger. That's, oh no. That's not a. That's not a Harvey Weinstein digit. That's a normal fucking size hey, finger. It looks like a pinto sausage. Oh, my fat goes to my gut, Jay, not <laughs> no, my fingers. But, but you, put, you didn't point your finger. What you said was, and I remember what you did because I was doing this. I was like, I, I, was, I was thinking, it's like, you were doing this. You were like. I think I might want to go. No, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't sound like fucking. I didn't sound like, so like, like Michael Keaton from fucking Batman. <laughs> you're no. like, no, you fucking zero in on my eyes and you locked eyes. You're like, I don't know, dude. Because I was looking around like I just this. Go. Nobody else was having a good time, and then I was having a good time. So I started looking around. He was like, <laughs> and then I saw I, Mike was going like this. He's like, <laughs> and I was like, I, I, I wanted to catch his eye. So when I finally caught his fucking eye, I'm like, hey, and he was like. What? And I was like, dude, it's like it kind of sucks right now, bro. Like it kind of sucks, dude. And he's like, what do you mean? I was like, dude, like nothing's happening. Let's just go sing some karaoke and forget about it. And he's like, dude, they're not gonna be having the fight there. I was like, it's my birthday. 
And then he's like, dude, just wait, just drink slower, and it's gonna be good. <laughs> no, I knew it because when we were getting our beers, like I, I, I felt it early because I was sitting there. Yeah, and I was, was like, it was in my toes. I was like, man, I don't, I don't want to be just completely ruined tonight. And, and and like I was, so I was drinking. So I was like, we got like three hours till the fight starts, and we're already like drunk. And yeah. We're sitting here, and I'm like, I'm just gonna sludge this. And before I could even knew it, I looked over, and we ordered our beers at the same time, and you were almost done. And, <laughs> and at that point, you were fucking having a ball. At that point, you were like, yeah, this is gonna be great. The it goes so away. Cool. It goes to away. Cool. And, I, and I'm slow drinking my beer and I'm thinking, oh, he's drinking fast. And then 20 <laughs> fucking minutes later, I look over and you like zeroed you in. Know and you're what like, it was? dude, let's go. You know what it was? I was like, like, you know what? You drink that fucking beer slow. I was like, you know what it was? It was, it was kind of like uh, the movie. I did watch another movie. I, I watched The Toy. Uh, great classic fucking film. Great Love movie. the movie. Yeah. Fuck people and fuck haters that hate that movie. It's a great movie. Uh, but with Richard Pryor and that kid in it, I, it was pretty much like the toy <laughs> when when he lost the air hockey. He's like, I don't want to play anymore. <laughs> like you know, it's like you, you, have you ever had those friends before where they're like, Hey, you you want to play some air hockey oh, yeah, or whatever? Take my ball and go home. Or it's like, Hey, I'm gonna play some Madden with you. We we, we know somebody like that. And he was like, uh, Then he was like, Yeah, I'm fucking amazing at it. Like yeah, if you want to play me, bro, we can play. And then when he loses, he's like, I just want to leave. <laughs> fuck this. I'm gonna take this motherfucker. And they get mad. I kind of felt like that in that moment because I was like, nothing's going my way. It's boring right now. I'm not having a good time. I just want to leave. No. Nothing's happening. And then Mike was like, you got to reach out and touch face. <laughs> and then I thought, you did a nice thing because well, well, Mike, uh, Mike's got a way, like, because you, you aren't coming off as like fucking uh, Captain Sirius on, on, the, on the planet of Sirius <laughs> 1. You were like, you were just like, dude, just drink slower, man. Let's drink slower. And then he was like, do you want to go out and smoke? Do you want to smoke? <laughs> He's like, we'll just go do that. We'll go We'll go out and smoke, and then we'll go calm our nerves, and we'll come back in. It's going to be great. It's going to fall into the gap. Fall into the gap. Yeah, and fall into the gap. It's like, it's like how, you, how you calm your bitch down <laughs> when she's fucking having an overreaction. It's like, look, it's just a credit card bill. I'm going to get a second job, was, and I'll pay everything off. It's funny because our, our friend Heather was, was, was there for, for your birthday. She wasn't there for the fight, but like she left like with two rounds to go in the last pre-card fight, and I I was like, I remember being like, I was like, you don't understand, like, this fight's gonna be, you're leaving at the wrong time, like, you're leaving too early, and she was like, ask me why I give a fuck, and I was Ooh. like, that's fair, honestly, I don't, you're not here for the fight. Why don't you mega horn it? But I was like, dude, I was, in my mind, I was like, we spent four hours just sitting here, I was like, watching these shitty fucking fights, I was like, we're gonna see the main event! I think that was the problem, I think that, I think if you're ever gonna go out and watch a boxing event, like, you gotta that, suffer for that free fight. You gotta go, yeah, you gotta suffer, or... Or you don't drink, you don't pregame it. You no, don't pregame it. Shouldn't pregame it. What you should, what you, you get there and you drink slow, and then you build your way up to the yeah. crescendo, and then you fight people in the bar. Well, I'm used to it because I go to a lot of like the the concerts that are, like smaller bands, so they're only general admission. Mm -hmm. So I know like you get there, you get in line, you have to stand there for an hour, and and and, and you're like fucking cor corroded with people all over you. Right. And you you stand there for an hour waiting on the first band to come, and then they play their six songs, and then some of them have, like two or three openers, so you have to stand there through those, and then you have to wait for a half an hour for the next band. So I think. I'm just like seasoned to just like wait and yeah. misery and like half drunkenness. So I'm used to it. So I was ready to go. But it was ultimately it was, it was a great time. It was, it was totally it, worth it. Yeah. Oh my god. Once those bells came out and the fighters came out, you're like, oh then yeah. You, then you get reinvigorated. You're fucking lions hunting the pack of yeah. gazelles. I an eagle, never say die, never say die. Okay. So what else did you watch? Uh, I watched uh, Contagion. Uh, me and Kevin mm -hmm. going through all like the flu movies and shit like that. Oh, yeah. So we watched Contagion fucked me up fucked scared the shit out of me yeah. because if you look at the connections between like what's going on right now with the coronavirus and how that movie goes that's why the matrix is real oh, motherfucker man. but Soderbergh's good dude like he's such a good director yeah. man and but I felt so bad for fucking Matt Damon in that movie because dude I don't know if you remember this movie I don't know if you've even seen no, it I've seen it but it's been forever but dude okay when when the fucking thing starts his wife is Claire Danes is it Claire Danes the vagina candle lady yeah uh, uh, Pepper Potts she looks like it Pepper Potts no that's not Claire Danes that's, that's a, Gwyneth, Gwyneth Paltrow, Paltrow yeah. his wife's Gwyneth Paltrow and she's overseas vagina candle and she comes comes home and she gets sick, right? So his wife, Gwyneth Paltrow, is sick. She dies. She has a seizure. It's really painful to watch. Yeah. Next thing you know, their son starts to get sick. He dies. And then Matthew Damon's son just died. His wife just died. He should go to Mars. And then while he's there, he finds out, they tell him, that his wife Mars. contracted the virus because she was banging an ex-boyfriend while she was on that big screen. Set. Then fuck her. So then fuck he her. finds out, like, not only does he lose his son and his wife, but he finds out his wife was cheating on him Infidelity. after she's dead. And he's in quarantine. Oh, it's just fucking all, like, painful Sounds shit. bad. I don't want I don't want to watch that. Why did you say? Why did you watch that, but dude? The movie and Lawrence Fishburne and everybody in the movie is so fucking good, and it's so close to like, dude. If you watch this and you see the parallels between how like the steps of the coronavirus is unfolding, it will fuck your mind up. I'm not worried about the coronavirus because I have Lysol. But we're sitting there watching this, right? And the movie ends, and we're like 
crying together. Bottle and a half. We're not crying, but we're a bottle and a half of wine in, and oh, I'm thinking, yeah. let's watch something emotional. Because we do this Waiting. thing where we like drink together. Like I'm gonna fuck you up with some sadness. That's why I watched South. Dude, I've, I've done that before. Yeah, you have to do. That's it. what we watched. I don't know if you've seen this or not. Oh, uh, uh, Christopher Reeve tribute, Manchester by the Sea. Yes. Did no. You watch that? Uh, no, no, no. I, no, I'll Ooh. take. I won't watch it, but I'll tell you what I did watch. I watched the most emotional, impactful moments of that movie. You know what I mean? What? Like uh, when uh, he has the run-in with his ex, and she's like, "I just want to say I'm sorry." Like, honey, you Wait, walk. Motherfucker, you didn't watch the. No, because I can't watch you it. You didn't even see that. You gotta, you gotta have the emotional lead up. You can't just go hot. Not, you can't come at a gun, Zakimbo. Bet me, I can't. can't. I got, I got, I got that bolted. No, you listen, gotta take I it said, in slowly. No, I don't. No, it's I the don't. Story. I snorted the fucking coke, and it's I'm the already slow ready. Slow scene changes. I'm, I'm, I'm 300 seconds ahead. Do of you, you even know why he's so sad? Then yes, I know. Do I know the fucking movie? Because of his kids. Yes. Fuck. I, yeah, and he walked away, and they burned to fucking death. Yeah, he's going to get alcohol. Yeah. yeah, I know the fucking story. Whoa. I'm saying like you was sad. Like I knew what I knew, but when I because it was it was on those like uh, like most emotional um, like what you that, watched the fucking like top ten. Dude, I'm like I'm not kidding. Like holy fuck, dude, I'm having deja vu. I feel like I'm in I'm in I'm in, <laughs> I'm in fucking time. That's uh, just me yelling at you for not watching. No, no, movie. I feel like even you. I knew you were gonna say that, but no. Uh, Holy shit, dude, my fucking shit's going That's what I'm saying, you just used to be yelling at you for looking up spoilers before you watch movies! You just, can't do that! Why don't you suck a You're rooting against the ambiance! You gotta take the whole thing Don't in. act like you know what that you word is. You can't just watch a scene. Dude, I, it was because I you like... cunt waffle. How about this, you fucking bitch hole? I was saying I wanted to watch it because it was listed as one of the more sadder scenes of the film. And watch the fucking film! I don't want to watch the film. God damn it. I'm not going that deep into my fucking, like, uh, tear meter. But it was it was really sad, uh, and uh, I could see that. But you know, it's it's one of those things. I don't know if it's a guy thing. Like when you watch something sad, like you feel compelled to make your girl watch something like sad. Yeah, like that afterwards, is a thing you know what I mean? Like it's like you watch something sad and you feel like you're not fucking crying. Maybe it's just our enough. inner need to make our counterparts cry. Maybe, <laughs> maybe it is. Because you're like, I can't do it on my own. But like, he's like, hey, and you look over. Like, like, yeah. You ever do that? You ever do that? I fuck like that. I like I side fuck where you're like oh, no. you're watching them do this and like watching them and yeah. see if they're like reacting and they're not. Yeah. Like they got maybe like that one bullshit tear. No, Katie loses her shit. She gets real emotional. She started kicking me. But then, she was like. How how dare you make me watch this fucking movie no, no, right no, now? But even sometimes that's not enough. You're like, I want to, I want to, I want to see snot buggers. I want to see you fucking like falling yeah, apart. Yeah, I think it's because we're like, fucked up in there. I head. think that's what it is. And you're like, no, I got, I'm gonna like, I'm gonna watch. Let's watch Yoda die. Yeah, like if I was hanging out with you, I'd be like, dude, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put on Manchester. I don't, think, but I don't want to do that. But with Katie, I'm like, yeah. I want to make you fucking cry. Yeah, it's, but she it's likes weird. to cry at movies, yeah. so it's fair. Yeah. I don't know. But anyways, I don't know what. The what fuck else did you watch? Watched, um, Harley Quinn. Oh, I did watch Charlie Quinn. That fucking shit is funny as fuck. I still gotta get on that. There is a show on the DC Universe, um, the the app or whatever, and it's Harley Quinn, and it's like twelve episodes, and it's it's animated and it's R rated, and like they make fucking like sex jokes, Ooh. they make finger bang jokes. Ooh. The Joker's fuck. He's voiced by Alan Tudyk, dude. From, ah. uh, yeah, fucking. <laughs> I don't know who the, who's Alan. He's the dude from um, Dodgeball, the pirate. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, sweet. Okay. Dude, it is so. Fuck, and there's this one point where the Joker's like fighting with Harley Quinn and he's like, oh hell with the she has VD anyways. And then and then Bane's like, well actually most, or not VD, he's like, hell with her, she has, H he's like, you know she has HPV, right? And then Bane's like, well you know most sexually active adults do. <laughs> it's just fucking hilarious. What blew my mind was the fact that they talked like that. Oh, they're and it's a cartoon. Nasty. I'm yeah. like, that's got, that, that's got to be number one with a bullet point that I got to watch at some point. Because here's the thing, they're... And I said this again, I know, on the, on the commentary of Harold <coughs> Kumar, it's so cool that DC is not owned by some fucking Mickey Mouse cocksmoker yeah. that they can do this kind of stuff. So, I, But it, it still blows my mind the fact that Warner Brothers like would let these characters like go ahead and like, let's make some shit, raunchy dude. shit I'm shocked with these the shit. characters. DC's always had a hold on the animated shit, though. They've always been the they best. Do, no, they do. They, 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 they got the Red Sun coming out. Yeah. But this is so raunchy and hardcore, and it's fucking hilarious, man. It's so well done. What got me onto it is I saw this clip on Twitter, someone posted it, and it's literally, it's the Joker, he's got Batman tied up and he's shocking him, and, and he's like, he does, he's making fun of Tesla or whatever, and he's like, and the Joker's looking at Batman and he's like, I ordered my fucking electric car through Gotham, whatever, like six months ago, he's like, he's like, I put my deposit down, he's like, where's my goddamn electric car, Bruce? <laughs> it's fucking hilarious. That's some good shit. You gotta watch it, but I can't remember anything Yeah, that, like, uh, yeah, so I can't, I can't remember, like, the only other thing, I, like I said, I mentioned it for a second, I watched The Toy, um, 
and people it's, hate. Dude, it's got a nine percent rotten. Fuck all that PC shit. And, and, that movie's it, it's hilarious. all it's all PC hating on it. Yeah. Like, and you know, I, like I watched the movie. I still get teary out at the end. It's literally about Jack and and the, and the main kid like falling in love with the, and becoming friends. Like they're friends. You know what I mean? And like Jackie Gleason's the dad in it, and. He's like rich, super powerful guy. He doesn't spend time with his kid at all. He just buys him whatever he wants, right? He doesn't care that his kids, he only gets him once a week. No, he only gets him once, he gets him a week out of the year. And he just lets him buy whatever he wants. Jack comes in, played by Richard Pryor fucking awesomely, and becomes his friend. Like he listens to him, he wants to actually get to know him. And, and you know, what you learn throughout the film is it's about friendship, love, and ultimately uh, a renewal of father-son relationship. Treating people with respect. And yeah, people wanted to bitch and uh, rage on it because of what the actual prospect of the film was. But dude, that's not what it really meant. Like it yeah. was, that, that was surface level bullshit to get you in there. It was kind of a comic thing. They're like, hey, let's make fun of it a little bit. We're not, this isn't serious. Richard Pryor fucking himself signed on for it for a, a, a starring goddamn role. Like, trust me, Richard Pryor's not a fucking idiot that's gonna be taken advantage of. Probably my favorite stand-up comedian next to Eddie Murphy. Like, probably my favorite stand-up comedian. He's fucking amazing. He's amazing. He's amazing. Um, and, and the thing is, when you watch his stand-up, um, Sunset um, Boulevard, I don't remember, um, I can't remember one of his specials that he did, but he always talks about the fact that black and white people, like how we all should get along, we're all Americans, like, you know, you can make fun of each other, but it's okay, like, don't get over emphasis on a skin color that, that's what his message was he's like he wanted to make fun of everybody it's like we're fucking americans like, let's make fun of each other you're a fat piece of shit because you have a donut kfc black white it doesn't matter you're a fat piece of shit you like that's what he was doing and what when he took this movie what he what he saw on the script i'm sure is the fact that he's just in the movie the the, the kid is looking for a friend and that's what he gets yeah. it starts out the wrong way because he feels like he has to buy a friend and not and even there's a really really uh cute a moment in the film and kind of makes you a little teary out he was like um you, you don't buy a friend you earn a friend like you earn a friend and he's like because you know the kid's like i just want a friend and he's like you bought a friend you know you have to work hard you have to earn a friend you have to earn a friend's trust you have to you know you have to put yourself out there and be yourself and there's some good messages in there if you would stop fucking focusing on the color bullshit and you could find a fucking good message in the movie and that's what it was doing and that's why Richard Pryor signed on to it. It was a great movie. It's a great underrated yeah. classic movie. Love that movie. So yeah. if you ever get a chance to check it out, it's on Vudu for like two ninety nine. I'm gonna watch that this week. It's a great movie. Yeah. You should watch it with um, uh, the kids. Yeah, dude. I used to love that movie. It's so good. It's, it's so awesome. good. Such so good practical pranks in that yeah, movie yeah, yeah. too. So uh, that's what we watched. Um, all right, when we come back in a second, not that we're gonna go anywhere for you. Don't look at me like that. Why are you eyeballing me, motherfucker? Girl, I fucking. You the think shit. this is my fucking house? Yes. That I pay rent here? Yes. I do. Yeah. I wish I paid. Rent. God damn it! I'm in the streets. So every week we decided we we had a show going on there for a while where we would just take the worst Michael Myers mask and we would just make fun of them and have a good there's laugh so many at their there's so many but now that we're doing this new format of the show we figure we do one a week we just pick a new mask a week and this one comes from the guy that sent us this his name is his, his name online is Juju Poop <laughs> <laughs> that's a great name and you know what happens when he poops it's magical it's, it's uh, like a little uh, bright green, uh, green glow his, name is, his, his, Juju poop. his email is Juju Poop <laughs> Like J U J U poop. <laughs> juju poop. I like it. I All like right. it. So we're just, I'm gonna say, hey baby, I gotta go to the bathroom. I gotta take a juju. Poop. I got ice juju bits. It's I gonna, gotta take a juju poop. It's gonna be a fast, rapid one. It's gonna smell slightly like Skittles. <laughs> okay, this mask that he sent mm -hmm. is Carmelo Anthony, the basketball player. Well, bitch, you already looked at it. No, I no, 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 I barely looked at it. Like, I, no. I, it came with an article, so I read the article. But I didn't really. I Carmelo Anthony the wrote all. it. Barely looked at the picture at all. But um, I, I had to see it just to make sure it was bad, you know? Because you put one that's good up there, it's like, hey, whatever. Mm -hmm. But uh, here is the mask. I'm going to put it up. I'm gonna, we're going to look at it at the same time I throw it up to you guys. This is Carmelo Anthony at Lala, someone called Lala's birthday party, dressed as Michael Myers. And three, two, one, sucking, fucking, and touching. Here we go. 
<laughs> Life has not been good for the lead singer of Corn. <laughs> Jonathan Davis, back at it again from the shadows. He looks like, he looks like, look at this wet jumpsuit. He looks like he was at the Blade party in the beginning when the sprinkler started to rain. He's got, he's got birth stress marks like his mouth just had a fucking baby. That motherfucker looks like a final boss in Ninja Gaiden 3. <laughs> <laughs> he's got that Pippi Longstocking hairdo going he's on. He's got that, he's got that good curl on the left side. <laughs> yeah, I like how he's walking in the party like he's a boss, but at the same time, he's not confident in all where he's going. Hey, man. What the? And what is he wearing a garbage bag that's shaped like a that's, fucking jumpsuit? That's what I'm saying, dude. This is like there was a fire alarm and he didn't leave. This looks like Michael Myers brought to you by Joel Schumacher. <laughs> <laughs> dude, he, he's fucking guy. That's a Seriously. Joel Schumacher's he's fucking like, Michael Myers. Hey man, y'all got any of that fucking cocoa butter? I like that cocoa butter, I put it on my sandwich. I need that brand. cocoa butter for my eye stretch marks. This is the way you look when you find out that fucking Taco Bell stopped serving fucking anything. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, what time is it? It's four o'clock. Oh shit. Here's, another, here's another picture of both. Him and him where the where the okay so I think this is I think these are, these pictures are wrong I think it should be him smoking the blunt first <laughs> as Michael Myers and that's what he looks like afterwards that's definitely not a blunt because it's rolled too well it's just a cigar it's just a cigar well, that's a shitty cigar but I, I do respect it though because he actually went the extra mile of putting the black eye makeup on which I'm always one to do even though afterwards after you put on the Michael Myers makeup you go to work that night no matter how hard you scrub it off you've got that like Billy Joel Billy yeah, Joe you, like Green Day fucking see, eyeliner on I've, I've wore the mask uh, a handful of times not that many you never did the makeup though did you no I didn't want to yeah because I was only in it a few of you but it does smell like a condom like oh, it, it smells yeah. so bad it and does. I couldn't imagine with the black shit on it so go up really quick. So the original picture, right here. Motherfucker, you got my Cheez-Its? No. <laughs> I know you got my Skittles. You got that big cheese goodness? You got that Starbust? Uh, no, this is like... Been spending most our lives living in and hadn't built Smith's Grove life. <laughs> like, it looks like the makeup that Mudvayne started when they first started, you know, and then they stopped doing it. Dick, the remains of yeah, today, like, like, everything that I am. The, the, the very first song that Mudvayne did, and they're like, hey, you know what? Slipknot's already doing this. Let's stop. <laughs> That's fucking good. I love it though, because it's fun on multiple levels, because it's a famous basketball player, and the mask is fucking terrible, and he got that Pippi Longstocking hair. It kind of looks like it kind of looks like Cecilia Murphy when he's fed up. <laughs> no, it's it, you know what? That's the best part of the fucking like that. That's one of my favorite parts of the show is is uh, we get to look at some shitty Michael Myers masks that we know are awful, that we know that God himself gets blue in the face from looking at. I don't know why he would, but he would. Uh, it's the best part of the show. And thank you so much for sending it in. Yeah, thanks, Juju Poop. Juju Poop, your poop will ever, forever shine. Uh, I respect you, Juju Poop. Hey, that's Juju Poop. You're not Juju Poop. <laughs> you got that Juju Poop mask. But, uh, <laughs> that's what they should call it. You should sell that shit. That shit said, Juju Poop 20,000 That shit sound like a, like a random PSN fucking like, uh, uh, like a name tagger. Like, uh, I, it's like, I don't know. I don't know what my name's going to be on PSN. Juju Poop. I'm um, Juju Poop. Yeah, my name's hey, Ball Fuzzball. I wish Juju Poop Poop was a real fucking like uh, like a goddamn professional video game like you know gone Halo or something. It's like hey Juju Poop wins. <laughs> Juju Poop. Juju Poop wins. His poop's strong. Um. Uh. Okay. So that's the that's the fucking show, man. It's over. We're Go already on. done. We're already done. Go don't you leave. Don't you fucking leave. Okay, you can go. Get your ass. I don't. I don't want to kidnap you, but please stay a little longer. Look, we got mimosas coming up in the morning. I uh, bought popsicles. I made some scrambled eggs. <laughs> <laughs> and we got pop tarts. <laughs> I got them pop tarts. Pop tarts for your ginger pinks. Scrambled eggs. You got. <laughs> <laughs> if you like those strappy eggs, you have two chip poops. Everything was going so well. Oh, wow, guys. Guess what? That was fun. This is episode three, yes. guys. We're already on God, thrice. Feels good. We love your fucking faces. If you're new to the channel, click that subscribe button to get some ice. Sick. God damn. Ooh. Wham. Really close to my ear. Woo. Oh, fucking. <laughs> I hope an fucking dirty butthole falls on your nose tonight and you smell it for I me. See, I hear everything y'all saying. Hello. Welcome back to episode three of this bullshit. I guess the flea market is doing well. Michael Myers. Dressed like bitch Myers from Sun 41. Everybody say hello. Good God, Michael. You make people wish they had coronavirus. Get off!
So listen to this, you piece of shit. Robin England's back in the news. Once again, that little maggot can't keep his face out of it. Like a fly, smelling poop. No, I'm not smelling your asshole. You do that on your own. He says, maybe have a movie with Freddy Krueger before he became Freddy Krueger, when he was just Fred Krueger, the nasty little pedophile boy child that he is. Michael Jackson. Looking like a burnt hot pocket. I hate it. I don't have anything to say about it. I don't care. Okay? Go make a prequel about the bastard. He's disgusting, his wiener is small, and he smells like dandelions grabbed in garbage juice. Just like you, Mikey. God damn, Michael, you look disgusting in a lot of ways, Michael. I mean, I mean, honestly, like right now, I feel like you're like our city or hall coming back. You're trying to. No, you don't do that. We're not buddy cop movie from 1986. Alright. Also, Jurassic Park Dominion. The goddamn dinosaurs are taking over the world and Chris Pratt can only be the one to save us because he's Star-Lord. Who gives a fuck? Nuke em. Idiots. Do a visible man. Huh? Do a visible man. Alright. Oh yeah, and then there's goddamn uh, the invisible man. Came out earlier this day. Thank God. Can somebody please give Michael that juice so he can go forever invisible and stay dead? I hate that movie. And I hate you for liking it. You're visible again and I hate you just as much. The Invisible Man. A guy beat the shit out of his girlfriend. She ran away. He stalks her. He's invisible. Chris Brown, where you been? <laughs> Alright, give me the Frighteners. Okay. And then, the Frighteners. Brought to you by, uh... What's your goddamn... Kojai Taylor? You see, Mike? I learned from Steven Seagal himself. The fat cop from Louisiana. Coach Adela says, uh, hey, the Frighteners, check it out, Mike and Jay, you stupid pieces of shit from YouTube. So they did. I watched it. God damn it. I watched it. They frightened people. Michael J. Fox was doing great. He couldn't get back in time. He wanted to have sex with his mom, Leah Thompson. Um, great. Guns Akimbo. And then uh, Guns Akimbo. Akimbo of the guns. I wish I had... Oh, Michael. You know what? I wish I had two goddamn guns with 50 bullets each. I shoot you 106 times, Sheriff. I kill that motherfucker with two guns attached to my hands. I kill you dead. Michael, you look like a fucking Dillard's commercial. It's a good movie. Uh, Elijah Wood's in it. Elijah Wood, Daniel Radcliffe. They look the same. They're cousins. Fuck them. One's Harry Potter, the other one's North. AKA Frodo, sucking Sam White's game cheese dick on the voodoo. What else are we talking about? Mm. Todd McFarlane wants to direct Spawn. A black man gets fucked, goes to hell, and comes back an avenging angel. Who are we talking about? talking about LeBron James when he left Cleveland? Shut up! It's been done. Stupid fuck. No, I like this movie, Michael. You know why? Do you know why? Because Spawn dies, and he goes to hell. That should be the end of the movie. Just like, I wish this did him dead, Michael would die, go to hell, and stay there sucking Jason's dick. But he won't. Yes, thank you. Whoever bought this toy for Michael, I hit you with a passion that can only be matched with the passion of the Christ. Get off. Michael, stop. 
playing with the goddamn camera. Also, Michael, you might be interested in this. Oh, God. Every time you touch me, I want you to die of the bubonic plague. Listen, Trick or Treat Studio are going to be releasing adult action figure collectibles. Yes, sir. Yes. They're going to be, uh, you know, Michael Myers, uh, Art the Clap. Art the Michael is showing you and demonstrating every pedophile in the tri-state area when they see a ice cream truck. Yes, very good, Michael. You learn what a camera lens is. Good. Maybe you should learn what poison is and drink it. You know, got them toy fit. I don't care. I mean, who the fuck made these nuts? Yeah, there's toys coming out. If you got the money to burn, burn it. You assholes. Oh yeah, and then Candyman. Yeah, very frightening. God damn, he throws you Skittles and snow cones. That's what he does. What are you doing? You're doing a He's not a magician. Yeah, so Candyman is coming out based on, uh, I don't know, 50 Cent song. I don't know. He's got Michael, yeah, apparently if you take a pee pee and you look in the mirror and you say his name five times, he comes and gives you sweets. You should do it. Stop touching me like you are my wife. She's dead because you fucking kill her. I fucking hate you. Yeah, Candyman, Jordan Peele, woo us. Go suck a dick. I don't give a fuck about Candyman. What is a Candyman? What is that? It sounds like a goddamn Schwann truck driver. Schwanns. You know what that is? It's supposed to deliver food to you. Okay? I don't care. You say his name five times, it comes out, and he ends your life. Well, if you're that bad off, Dr. Kavorka, he could have helped you out, but you sit in the prison, didn't you? Look at that ugly ass. So much fucking pain in that. Goldfish farts all night. I mean, that's it. I don't want to talk about it. Oh, damn it. Get, oh. Get a job, Michael. That's not a job. Skateboarding will lead you nowhere but to sucking a dick under the highway. You're going to be Steve-O in five years. You're only starting to look like him. I mean, what do you want? I mean, what do you want? Candyman. Woo. Let them spawn. Yay. You're the worst mistake of your life, Michael. If I died, I'd come back and I'd scald the fuck shit out of you. Get out of here. I'm done. Die! Die! With this! We watched a movie.